The broadcast from Yukula 2023 is brought to you by Tikator and Lumonite. Hello and welcome to Yucala 2023. It is a gorgeous, sunny, probably a little bit too warm day here in Polvo and the teams are getting ready here to set off for Venla. The start is in about 15 minutes time. All the teams have checked in. They're making way, their way through towards the start and set for a fantastic next few hours of racing um jonas is also here beside me we've uh, both had a little chance to preview the forest that all of these uh, thousands of runners are about to head out to for one of the highlights of the orienteering calendar uh, the anticipation is really growing here in the arena you can see just how many team members how many spectators are going to get ready to cheer on their teams it's set to be an exciting uh few hours or several hours maybe for some of the weaker teams as they head out into the terrain uh really really looking forward to it today it is as i said pretty warm i say probably high 20s at the moment uh, and that's i'm sure going to be a factor for uh some of the teams um out there as you're really going to have to manage that heat control as well but uh we've got absolutely loads of teams gonna head out there in just a moment they're kind of lining up in their rows of 20 and getting ready to go it's a beautiful arena here uh just situated completely in the middle of the forest we're about kind of 40 minutes drive east of helsinki and um the forest out there is is quite mixed as well So, Jonas, what are we going to expect then over the next few hours? What's, it, it's my first uh, Yukala, my first Venla here. What am I going to, you know, what kind of exciting things am I going to see over the next few hours? Well, uh, we're going to see a lot of interesting orienteering for sure. And it's such a special atmosphere at the arena because it's not only one competition, as you can see, obviously, for elite runners. It's everyone here. It's from the comic retailers in <laughs> Helsinki to the firefighters, the policemen. It's really a competition for everyone. And it's going to be a hot day. Yeah, I liken it to like a big city marathon. You know, you've got your elite athletes who are going to be right there at the front, really wanting to push it hard. They've uh, kind of maybe spent a couple of days here, like training in similar terrain, getting ready for this. It's a big highlight of their calendar. You can have your good club runners, you know, ones who are going to want to put in a good stint for their team. You get your kind of, you know, like average club runners. Yeah, they do a lot of orienteering, but they're just going to go around and have some fun. And people who don't do very much orienteering as well going around here and you know in w when the weather's like this yeah the yukula weekend is the best weekend or e even the yukula week is the best week of the year mm. for every runner also for the elite runners because you get there maybe you fly to finland you get here by boat or you are in finland mm. but you go to the area where the competition is held a few days before just to get in contact with the maps and the the mapping kind of mm. usually you book a uh, cottage close to a lake then you have a good time i mean you don't have to train a lot because you of, of course you just want to mm. get used to the maps and it's close to the competition so you go there and you have some shorter trainings uh, every day and then you have a lot of chilling and uh, good time with your club <laughs> mates and everything so it's it's very it's a very good uh, week if the weather's fine and it has been fine. Yeah, it's definitely. been really nice. It's almost, it's t almost, I mean, if you look at the uh, arena, you've seen it from a boat before. There's actually no shadow <laughs> in the whole arena. And uh, it's, I mean, if you have to wait here for a few hours, the top teams, of course, they will bring the runners in just one or two hours before. So the last leg runners here in the women's relay, of course, they're not here yet for mm. the very top teams. 
But if you are in a team that's maybe not as good and you start if maybe an hour or two behind the, the leaders in the very end, it's going to be a long time in the sum. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, they all, all the different teams, depending on their team number, had different kind of times to check in and to to make sure their their timing device was cleared and, and everything, just to make sure that they were there. So if you were one of those teams with the, one, starting with one of the high numbers, then yeah, you've been already in this sun a lot. So there's lots of sun cream basically being applied um, here. And, and then everybody else who's not even a part of this is, you, as you can see on the left-hand side there, just waiting by the barriers. They're all kind of in front of us. And this is a few of them for the finish line too. But I mean, I can imagine in, in other years, there would be even more people in the arena because uh, then mm. as, as a participants from the Yukla relay, so from the men's relay later on, usually get here f for the start of the women's relay of Venla, uh, just to take a look, take a look at the arena, take a look at the last control, which we have two of mm, today. Which they do know about, yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> that was in the final details, um, yeah. And, but today it's so warm, so I think that many teams, uh, men's teams, they decide to stay home and not kind of get here standing around in the sun mm -hmm. all the time so I think it maybe if the, it would be a bit cloudy would have even more spectators but uh, as you can see here it's there's no lack of spectators anyway no in the forest obviously it's a lot more shade and everything but there's no wind at all like it's still quite it's still really really quite warm out there and you can see people still filing into the start I mean these the starts of Venla of Yukala are just kind of legendary. Seeing so many athletes uh, starting their orienteering at the same time, like moderate chaos, excitement. And what are all these athletes, you know, going to be feeling right now? <laughs> yeah, anxiety. <laughs> 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 to be honest, I mean, I've been running the first leg a few times, a couple of times uh, at Yukala, and uh, oh, it's. Uh, I, I mean, it's both. It's it's really cool, but it's oh, it's a, it's a tough thing because you get thoughts about what happens if I lose the map. What <laughs> happens if if anything? If I just fall down? I mean, we have seen that at Tio Mila mm. with uh, Savedan yes. who got yeah. like broken ribs and everything. Uh, so it's it's really the advice I got when I was running the first leg like, from mm. my coach was just take it like a strong grab around your map mm. and don't open it until you are sure that you can open it without losing it so usually mm -hmm. you just run the first because it's a long run out usually about four or five hundred meters so you run the first 200 meters as fast as you can especially mm -hmm. the top teams and then when you get a bit of space you start to open it and it's really special because you're standing there and when you start running you almost can feel how the it's it's almost like a small earthquake because everyone is starting <laughs> together and it's such a strange atmosphere. Well, they're lining up there, lines of 20. See, everybody with the white bib on is one of the, the top teams. It means they're going to have GPS tracking. Um, we won't be able to show you uh, quite all of the GPS tracking. There's different parts uh, that we'll be able to show you, of course, because there's still legs, uh, legs still to go. People who might be watching this broadcast who are going to be going out and running. So we've got to be a little bit careful about what we say and what we show you. But those it was those all top runners that have earned their spot from being there based on their result last time. And from earlier years, when it was as warm as it is uh, today, I think we can, for a few of the top teams, we can see that they skipped the actual uh, running shirt from their club and they're just wearing this number bib. So it will be a bit harder to see who it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't get a lot of help from the running T-shirt. Still a good uh, kind of few minutes to go before we actually have that start then. They are... Yeah, all, all eyes forward. Try not to look at the, <laughs> who's I mean, next to them, I think. We have seen different approaches when it, when it comes to how the start works here. Mm. Uh, I had experienced years when they had like uh, kind of hanged up, the, the, the maps were hanging in front mm. of you. I think today we're going to see all the workers in this yellow uh, shirts. They're going to hand out the maps for the one row mm. so you will see when they start to hand them out about three minutes or two minutes before the start you will see them going from the left to the right to the picture handing out the map to every runner here 
Yeah, I saw, I think on the Eucalypt social media, they were practicing it with like two lines of runners, um, just exactly what this Stark crew needed to do at this so point. It's such a specialist job. Oh, yeah, they can see that they start to hunt them out, not every run together. Uh, one thing you should do when you get your map, no, no, I think they're just checking if everyone's there, maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. They, because if someone is missing, of course, uh, there's a risk that you hand up out the wrong map. Uh, to the wrong runner. So when you get the map, you have to be really careful and take the, like double check if you have the right map. Yeah, so everybody's gone up the line now and we've got well over one and a half thousand runners <laughs> just there, all ready to start at the same time. This is, a, I mean, this is a great s slot. We can see uh, over the, the front there. And you can see that uh, just after the start, it gets a bit more narrow. So even uh, w one more reason to run fast in the beginning. And then you have uh, a few hundred meters to run uh, on this open field here before you head into the forest. And in the forest, it's actually quite uh, unique as well for competitions. They, are kind of, they were cutting down mm. a few of trees just in order to give you, give you a bit more space uh, that it won't stop you, slow you down too much when you enter the forest. And how important is it that, you know, you've got, especially if you're, you're an elite team and you're maybe looking to take a, uh, you know, top 10 position or something, how important is it to be starting in the first, like, two lines? <laughs> it is important. And we know that uh, Pan Orhus, they missed to sign up for the competition. So they kind of got an extra rule that they could do it afterwards. But they got the start number, 1,549, <gasps> starting way behind. And I think, uh, to be honest, that's... That's it? That's oh, that, I mean, it's so difficult. It's like, I think it can cost like three, four minutes just to the start point. Yeah. It's, it's so hard to get in front of one and a half thousand runners. Mm. Well, we've both been out by the start point. There's like a, there's a camera there. We'll be able to see everything, what's been going on. And now we have these maps being handed out. We can see, uh, have a little look at then some of the top runners. Uh, and some of those maybe we could see setting fast times on the first leg as well. But to come back to your question, I mean, in the first two rows, you can see that we have like the top 40 teams from last year. Mm. I think most of the teams uh, will end up in the top 15 or most likely among this top 40, maybe top 60 at least. And uh, from there, you can make it to the top yeah, 20 to the start point. That's not mm. that big of a problem. But you have to you have to be very careful. There are many runners around you that can step onto your foot. You don't fall. Don't lose your map. That's the rule. Yeah, don't fall. <laughs> don't lose your map. Uh, sounds kind of, easy, but kind like of, not. <laughs> and at the same time, you kind of have to prepare to the first control as well. But if you don't have the tactic to be leading the pack from from the very beginning, from the very start, uh, then you can maybe take it a bit. I mean, you can start reading the map a bit later, but of course you have to be careful because forking is something they take very seriously here in Finland. Oh, they do. We're going to be chatting a lot of forking um, over the next few hours and in the Ukula Relay as well, um, because all of the all of the legs are forked across both uh, relays today, so everybody knows you've really got to be doing your own map reading. And you know, this Venla relay is something where we see a whole mix of age groups as well. There's a whole mixture of teams, and it's just kind of open to everybody here as well. So I think we've got about one minute uh, before the start now. And this is a nervous uh, time now. <laughs> There's like a little heartbeat music being played over the sound system as well, though I don't know whether this group will hear it quite as much. And then, you know, there's probably not going to be, you know, there's not going to be any chat here. It's going to be quite kind of eerily quiet for just how many people there are. Uh, but you can see everyone's kind of got their, their like GPS watches ready to press and everyone's ready now and then we it goes a little bit quieter in front of us people have raised their cameras up ready to capture this unique moment in orienteering the start of this Venla relay in four legs time we'll find out who is going to be crowned the champions Go on, 
There we go. The gun is fired and they are off. Over one and a half thousand runners straight out into the terrain. And imagine now if you have to start at the very end, how will you pass one and a half thousand runners uh, <laughs> early in the competition? It's almost impossible. What on a great sight as we see all of these runners on this first leg of this Van Le Relay heading out into the forest. They're still crossing the start line, which is right next to our commentary position. You see how much dust all these athletes are kind of firing up into the air as they get funneled through here towards the start where the orienteering really, really gets underway. There's a little bit of a hill to climb up here, but those top athletes already heading their way, getting close towards the start triangle. And um, what a sight. So many orienteers heading out towards this fantastic forest. And these are the leaders then. All seems very calm at this point. They've got a yeah. run out towards the start. I and it's this very, that looks like it's kind of been cut down a bit and more I, as well. I can tell you it looks calm, but it's really fast. <laughs> they are running very fast here. Uh, I think that the pictures here, they don't really show that, but usually the, the speed out to the starting point is really, really high. So we've got teams, team three, uh, okay, Kora, Vilma von Krusenzwerner uh, out there, Veronika Kalinina for IFK Ludinger was towards the front there as well. Second and third last time. I got this little kind of trench to pull at pass and the start triangle itself is kind of just about where this camera is actually situated. <laughs> and you could barely see all these runners back here because of just how much dust and everything they're kicking up that all of the bodies ready to head out actually into the terrain. We've got a gorgeous drone shot over the forest. You can just see the start triangle is probably about at that furthest point of the open. And you can see here that they're actually using this kind of cotton area. And uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it would be specially made for this I, it occasion. It looks yeah. like it was, I would think. Um, yeah, they've like almost been digging tree roots out of it as well. Um, and there's like all sorts of kind of small felled trees that are into this point but then it's kind of quite a little bit of green just where you head up uh, from the start triangle as well more and more runners after you can see two and a half minutes already gone there's still runners yet to reach the actual start control as well and they just keep coming and they keep coming it's a proper proper mass participation orienteering event and it's so great to see. Okay, that's the big drama of the start then, all done. People will go and kind of settle in, get ready maybe if they're running kind of second or third leg, or if they're running Yukula Relay later on, they might go and find some shade, I think. That would be my, <laughs> that would be my priority, would be to go and find some shade, or there's a couple of different big screens around. They'll try and watch uh, whatever is going on there, out there in the forest, uh, and see exactly what we can you know really try and follow the race see how their team's doing so those are the legs that we've got and the winning times for the leaders but who then let's let's have this this chance whilst we're kind of waiting to see our first teams through at the first kind of radio control who are the favorite teams then what should who are the ones we can be looking out for i mean uh, quite uh, i mean it's not totally unexpected that we can see the last year's teams that have been in the top 20 are about to be expected to be there as well uh, again uh, we also got an indication from TU Mila, of course, uh, where we had IFK Göteborg and uh, they were very strong uh, taking first and second position there in the women's relay. 
Uh, so, of course, uh, they are also the winners from last year. They are favorites. Um, but I would also like to highlight Sturatuna as one of my big personal favorites. I think they have a very strong team with uh, Rebecca Heindrup on the first leg now. Uh, then uh, especially the finish with Marie Ulausen and Tove Alexandersson is, yeah, I mean, uh, that's really good. <laughs> you have two world-class runners on the last two legs. Um, other teams, then I, I think there are many teams. Iktisa is quite interesting mm. team from Lithuania, having Sandra Grossberger on the first leg. Uh, but then there's Kalvan Rasti, Nydalen with uh, Anne Margrethe Hausken on the last leg, Lachten Suni Stajad <laughs> with uh, uh, Mina Kaupi on the last leg. And uh, talking about legends, we also have Ol Norska from Switzerland. Maybe not one of the favorites, but uh, having Simone Nikli on the last leg. Yeah, all, all the orienteering legends, they've been like put on the last leg. It's going to be even, you know, what would we really love to see is what them all going out hey. to around a similar time. No, siellä on rasti. <laughs> Tiedätkö sen? <laughs> Joo. Hyvä matka. Do, do you want me to translate it quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah but I know you don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> she so was, asked, sure she was asked for her tactics and he, she st said that she just wants to get around uh, <laughs> and hanging with others. Okay. Well, uh, she's been quite delayed there by actually having a, a an interview in the middle of the... Um, you know, in the middle of the course, in the start of the course, that would just put me right off. So we won't be able to show you some GPS tracking until we get a little bit further kind of around the course, but we do have it up on our screen so we can have a little look about who is uh, Who's in the lead? It looks like Ludinger's made a good start. Tisa made a good start as well. Maybe cut, maybe just kind of getting ahead initially. But it won't be until our first radio control, which would be about 1.8 kilometers of the way around the course. Uh, then we'll expect to, to see them there. So probably in about four or five minutes time. We'll see them at that first TV control and manage to get those first split times. And Eunice, you, you kind of referenced earlier on about uh, the forkings and how the the Finns really take the forking seriously. So what do you mean by that? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, if you compare to other relays, that's, I mean, that's, uh, I'm talking about the experience we have from uh, earlier competitions in the earlier years, is that uh, you see that usually you have kind of classic four kings where you have two, three different options and you have either the left one, the middle one or the right one. Uh, here it's often quite complicated. I mean, there are four kings where you have different amount of controls, different directions, often you cross each other on the forking so it's it's forked over two three or four controls and that's something you know as a runner you expect it to be di kind of different here they really try to do everything because there's so many teams out there to to get all the runners apart to force them to do their own race and that's something that's really important i mean you can see it every leg here is forked the Finns want you to do the orienteering on your own. And you know that as a runner, so you're prepared for that. Um, you shouldn't just follow, really. That's a big no-no here in Finland. And how how difficult is that as a course setter, as a course planner, to, to kind of set all of these four kings and I guess try and make them fair, but also kind of kind of men, <laughs> well I was going to say mess with people, like that's kind I of mean, what you're wanting to do, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the difficult thing is, uh, as long as the forking is, uh, as long as you split them up time-wise, the more difficult it gets to make them equal. Mm. Uh, and it's very important to make them equal because if there is 
a difference with like one minute or more it's like that's really unfair because usually it's better to have the long option in the beginning and because then you have many runners around it's easier to win back the time if you have it in the very end it's there it's not enough time uh, left in order to get back again so it's very important that the four kings they don't have to be exact exactly equally uh, because then you don't really split up it can be a good thing to have like 10 15 seconds so if both have the controls in a good way that you still have the chance to kind of take drag them apart so that you don't see them uh, but you have to be very very careful to to have it quite kind of equal and of course that takes a lot of work so i think this is control number four and um they should be kind of approaching from from the other side of those boulders over there so it means the controls kind of hidden behind i thought oh, pretty good as you'd expect like to have all the controls even though there's so many units to punch like you really can't see them from the direction you are um approaching at all and then i'm sh i think they will split up into different directions uh, on their way out of this as well yeah, so i think we, can, we can spot the first runners there very soon to the picture interesting to see i i mean i can i think i can see someone maybe it's uh i can't see anybody i don't I know what you're looking at see something oh, there here. we go oh here's Sandra a couple of people Iktisa, there's still the backland leading up <laughs> Uh, Inge Lundinez for AFK Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. Lotta Karola Tamprempyrinto. Uh, Emma Arneson and NTNU. Second team of IFK uh, Göteborg. Nothing. Uh, Malungs Uku. Calvin Rasti, team two. Grace Malloy on the first leg for them. But you can see that uh, still uh, very many teams together, uh, not really splitting up. Uh, I, I mean, uh, of course, it's difficult to say if there has been a forking before. You don't really see if one or the other is faster because you don't know who had the left or the right or if, if there were different options. Uh, so it's very hard to say anything here in the beginning. But what we can say is uh, many runners still together. <laughs> Uh, Galina Vinogradova, I think, there for after Ursa. Yeah, this is exactly what we'd expect on the first leg. Absolutely no break in the runners now, no gaps whatsoever, as we see already 70 teams through. One and a half minutes at this control. The can imagine that we actually had more than uh, those yeah, it's 85 kind of catching teams. Up, aren't we? Yeah, 100 here teams, I'm sure. Here you can see why there are so many units to punch yeah. as well. <laughs> you can also see, if you look at it, you can see the difference between the Finnish teams and the Swedish teams in punching. Because in Sweden, usually you have uh, a sport end, yeah. and here you have Emit, and then you can see also the Norwegian teams usually much faster in punching. See, in the UK, we have both. And, but like, a, a sport I don't, it's probably more, it's still kind of more common. But still, with it not being touch free either, um, you just kind of, it's the worst thing to do, isn't it? Right? In the relay, just not punch, just kind of be too quick, not punch it properly, and then you're disqualified from that. I mean, that's, that's, just what you're wanting to avoid. And I guess, and, and I'm sure every, every team would have had, their briefing from the team coach. And if the team coach hasn't said, don't miss punch, <laughs> check your codes, then I mean, like, what is the team coach doing, right? I mean, um, the team coach shouldn't say, have to say you that you shouldn't miss punch. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway. But you have to, of course, if you're not used to the punching system, you have to be a, a, yeah, a careful in order to punch the control properly, but. But okay, a, a lot of these runners will have been through, I don't know, junior relays or stuff where where it does get drilled into you as a junior, uh, especially like. I mean, you have to check, check that you're at the right control, of course. You have to do that in a relay, but. 
Yeah, don't miss. Basically, okay, you don't should do that anyway. It. Don't miss punches a bit crude, but like <laughs> check your codes um, is is maybe more more useful, more more useful instruction than to say. Just trying to see if we find any of the big teams here in the beginning, but I think we had everyone through. All of the favorites. Sturatuna actually was a bit behind. Let me see. As we see, we know we've got team like number seven through here. We've got team number, you know, all sorts of. There we go, Tampering Print and number, team number 23 going through there. I did find out which, which club has the most number of teams. Would you like to guess? Helsinki in soon is there. It is. How many teams? Yeah. Oh. Would you like to, It's more than 23. I'll give you a clue. Yeah, 37. 27. Nah. Ah, you went too high. Uh, they've, got, they've also got the most number of teams uh, in Yukula as well, with 18 teams. There's a stat for you. Uh, and uh, talking about the top oh, the, teams, the team losing number 1,000. There we go. That's quite a cool <laughs> the, spot. The top teams uh, losing a bit of time. Sturatuna two minutes behind at this first uh, TV control. It's hard to see w within all of those runners. Uh, Rebecca Heinrup. You can also see that uh, actually Ukupan Orhus did quite a good job here. Let me see where they are. I can see them on the GPS. That's why I know. Oh, it's 41st. 41st. So only one minute behind. Hey, I thought it would be more of a disadvantage. Too, yeah, that's impressive. Very oh, here impressive. Here we go. Leaders again. Leading her. Hiden Kiertayat. Ukulinia. Sundsvalls. Nydalen. Yeah, very, very uh, obvious to see that team with the, <laughs> the zebra leggings. Calvin Rasti too, Grace Malloy, who's um, not been competing at the World Cup so far this year because she's doing a year in um, America. She's been studying in America for a year on a sports scholarship doing track and field. Denise mm -hmm. Kosova. Ingrid Lindenez here for uh, one of the favourites, the winners of Tia Mila, IFK Gothenburg. Tampering Printer in there as well. We've got some, uh, we saw team number 140 through, I guess. Some teams, if, if maybe if teams are expecting or hoping to kind of win or be top five, then we're going to put their best, really, really good runners towards the end. But other teams, they might want to put their best runner, if they want to be, say, top 50, they might put their best runner first, right? I mean, uh, one interesting example uh, to name here is maybe Jöteborg Majona. Because Tilde Backlund, in my opinion, is clearly the second strongest runner in the club mm. behind Lina Strand. And they decided now to put her on the first leg because it's so important to have a good start. And if you're up there after the first leg, uh, it's much easier, it's less nervous. Uh, you have possibilities to kind of uh, get help of other teams as well. And I think it might be a clever decision. Uh, at least it's paying off so far here on this first leg. Um, I think we are expecting soon Stura Tuna. It's two minutes it was at the first. Here we have them. Two minutes 15 behind. It was two minutes at the first TV control. Uh, so had Tisaran of the top teams.
it also here. I mean, there's still no gap. We have seen uh, runners coming in without any break. So even if you are a bit behind, even if you are those two minutes behind, it would be worse if there would be a gap after like mm. 30, 30 seconds up to one minute, because now it's still the chance that you can, yeah, that, that there's no risk that someone is just running away from the pack at the moment. No, but it can be hard to kind of overtake people oh, yeah, in the terrain. Hard. Like it really is to, to kind of, you know, be overtaking. But it's still easier to kind of overtake people. I mean, if you see the terrain there, of course, it's it's tough to go out and uh, leave the pack and just overtake uh, runners. But it's still harder to do and win back time when you have to navigate this well, kind of. Mm. I mean, of course you have to do it, but you can do it a bit more passively if you have so many runners in front of you. How would you say the visibility is out there, though, in general? Uh, well, it Not depends on where you are. Here, but like uh, generally, I think it's rather good around the arena, but what I've seen, but of course there are different parts uh, in the green bits, it can be low. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to say too much, um, <laughs> but it's nothing totally unexpected. Yeah, well, uh, you know, this this terrain was kind of described as having the, you know, in the final details on the website, the the kind of tops of the hills being pretty good, pretty runnable, kind of rocky. And then in between the hills, you've got these kind of sections of green that's quite typical for this part of Finland as well. well I couldn't describe it better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, it's a very accurate description. It's it's good, it's fast on the hills. But that, I mean, that's generally in Finland, but if you do orienteering yeah. here, you usually have pear rock on the top. It's quite fast. You can win an overview. Of course, you have to invest a few meters climbing in order to get up there, and it might cost you some strength, but might pay off as well, uh, especially on a bit shorter legs. And you have uh, a lot of energy that you can invest if, if you have a, the long night um, in the men's relay, for example, then you might not be very eager to run on <laughs> top of every hill. No, picking we could be a little bit more cheesy then. <laughs> I hope if you're watching out for a particular team that you've been able to see them through punching this control on this bridge over here. And of course, I mean, well, a reason why we don't see any GPS right now is because the organizers, they don't want to show the, the map to the runners uh, later on. As you can imagine, there are quite many teams that, uh, I mean, if you're now back in the accommodation, you're running maybe the last leg, uh, getting to the ar arena a bit later, you might follow the broadcast and every, everything you show uh, here in, on the screen is also shown in the screen in the arena. So you don't want to show any map bits too early uh, because it should be kind of a secret where you're gonna run still yeah well i mean that's like the essence of orienteering pretty much so um it's gonna ruin it too much if you figure out uh, exactly where you're gonna go And the uh, next TV control, I think we'll have at control 13. So it's uh, a few minutes left until they are there. As they are uh, approaching control 10 very soon.
And how much does terrain like this track up? I mean, by the time you get the fourth leg runners out, what do you think? Uh, well, usually um, it's tracking up a lot. Uh, it's not really the terrain that makes it uh, easy to track up. It's just the amount of <laughs> runners. I mean, you can imagine that you have, uh, especially towards the TV controls, which we will see, or usually you see them uh, not only once, but several times during the broadcast. Of course, it tracks up a lot <laughs> if like you're in on the fourth leg and then especially uh, when the Yukala relay is on as well. Uh, yeah, it tracks up a lot, but still you have to be careful because you, get, you don't only have one track, you have many tracks and you uh, the terrain is forked or the, the tr course is forked, as we said before, and you have to kind of find your way still. Uh, but then it's more about choosing the right track towards your control and it gets easier to run uh, because you don't have to lift your feet that much uh, at the very end. And you can see that's also something very, very special for you. There's a lot of talking in the forest. Well, I was going to say, because that is a real difference. Well, A, the speed, but also the sound then of, of these women who and are going to be helping each other get Here it actually course, helps right? if you're uh, multilingual. It would help yeah. to understand <laughs> Finnish. It really <laughs> would. <laughs> but I don't really think that anyone will complain here back uh, for those teams here if they're like talking to each other. It's, it's, no. less, it's less talking for the top teams, but there definitely is talking there as well. What kind of things are people saying then? Like, usually, are they saying which control code they've got? Usually, if you're in, I mean, it's there are different situations. If you're running with a club mate, maybe with someone from the second team, you exchange the, that's something you do, the, the number you're going to, just mm. to see if, if you can mm. go together or not. Uh, of course, I've never done that, but <laughs> I've heard of other people yeah, doing yeah. that. Uh, but there are also uh, situations towards the end. I mean, you don't definitely don't win the relay on the first leg. So when you get closer towards the end, I have heard other runners exchange numbers as well, of course. Oh. Yeah, but you can. You don't have to be. You don't have to say the truth. You can completely put someone yeah, else with saying the wrong number. Yeah, but it wouldn't help. I mean, it, but what do you win of that? Well, yeah, exactly. Well, you just put the other person off a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I think this is control number 13 then. Mm, I expect them to be here in about, let's say, a minute. It's always hard to say how much delay we have on the GPS, but um, about a minute maybe. Yeah, you can see just... You can see these kind of younger trees then in the background. You'd, you'd expect that to be mapped a kind of a little kind of dark green and controls on the edge of those. Let's see if we can look out for who is on their way. It has been a bit of a change in the terrain here. Uh, I can tell you so much. It's a bit more dense, but very open just around the arena. You can also see mm. that if you just look at the map. So it's there's no real information I give away here when I say that. But this, I mean, th there aren't recent maps of this area a lot, and the vegetation will grow, and we get some bits will get felled, and all of that kind of thing. So, what the northern part hasn't been used for 30 years, and the southern part last used in something like 2003. Yeah, it was exactly. So it's yeah, it's an old map, but of course, you c even from old maps, you can read out quite a lot. Uh, of course, you shouldn't really look at the vegetation, but you see how stony it is, how the. Uh, the terrain is looking like how much climb you can expect and the, the kind of route choices waiting for you. So there's definitely some help from all the maps. But let's see now. I think we'll very soon we'll have the first runners coming. Yeah, I can definitely hear somebody yeah. coming through. Uh, <laughs> obviously the visibility much lower, so we can't see them approaching. Oh, here, here we go. This, this is Team is 2. Linnea. Yeah, now leading her, sorry. Westervik, Yifu Mura. I think it's Veronica Kalinina for on first leg for leading her, the Russian athlete. Yeah, Denisa Kosova and Lena Eliasson Love. Then we also had Sandra Grossberger for Itisa. Grid Lundanes, IFK Göteborg, Erika Åkesson, IKWP second team, and Anna Ulmensson, Nydalen. There is Linné. 
Kerstin Melby Jakobsen for Linnea. And uh, Tilda Backlund, as you said, uh, pointed out before, still in the top 20. And now a little bit of a gap. So Hedvig Gudesen kind of still in that leading group, as you said. And, uh, who's going? Panel who's really strong. Uh, That's if you really look at the start, start number 1,548. Oh. And we have seen that pack in the beginning. Mm. And now to be at what is essentially in, I would still call that kind of a leading group. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, one minute is past now. So 23 teams within one minute. And we are waiting for teams as Kore. Here comes Poikana. Another group here. Alfta Ösa. Tampurin Perinter as well. Yes. That's a lot of Kahola on the first leg for Tampurin Perinter. We, of course, looking out for one of the favorites as well, Stora Tuna, who've really uh, got strong athletes, um, particularly on the last two legs. Mm, they we'll were about out for them. two, two minutes behind, 2.15, yeah. I think. So they should be here, but I can tell you they won't be here for a while because they're out in trouble. There are other teams uh, in trouble here as well. Iko Hakavs Poikana, for example. Yeah, Stora Tuna 2 have actually just gone through. Mm -hmm. Tisaran, Linnea Klaasdotter, 2.26. have Halden here, Mael Bovier, and uh, Antenne's second team. This is Sedatelli and Ikvan, Laura yes. King on first leg. Another gap here, a few seconds. Still no sign of Storatuna. Still no sign of Ika Hakab's Poikana. There are a few teams struggling here with those controls. Espon Sunta, one of them, quite far away from the control, I can see on the GPS. Soon we have four minutes and still no Stura Tuna. I think here here they are, right? Yeah, 32, yeah. Just missed them on the graphics, but this was uh, Rebecca Heinrup. We had Sunto uh, Iveskela punching there, Ika Hoppe. And now we get a little bit of running cam footage to get a little idea of what it's actually like through, I guess, some of the kind of denser parts here. We are behind Mura, Denisa Kosova. Try to spot who it is. It's uh, number two, right? Yeah. Number two is uh, Ludinger. So we're right with the leaders then at this point. Somewhere around there, we had uh, Vesterviks as well, Lena Eliasson. Yeah, we also got Tisa, I think, as well, towards the, the start. And they just heading through kind of a green part on the way back towards the arena. Waiting then at that next control. Might be control number 15, maybe we just saw in the picture. No, not maybe one a little bit later on. So, recap then of those standings. Yeah, it is. After 4.3 kilometers. Here we go. And it's Mura. 
in the lead, and I think it is Vesterviks. Then leading her. Yes, indeed. But the second team for Hakov Spoikena. Quite easy to spot the second teams in the leading group because they don't have this GPS <laughs> west. Uh, Netherlands Anna Ovenson for them. SK Point 30, that's Sorry Anton, actually climbing a couple of places there. Now we had 35 seconds. This is Panhor, it's quite easy to see on the <laughs> <laughs> look at the yeah, number. The number. <laughs> Femion Rasti, Ina Vesterlund. Yetebor Mayana, Tilde Backlund. There's Calvin Rasti, too. Calvin uh, Rasti, uh, one. one. Yep, Cecile Calandri. Rasti Karut. Fredrikstad Ski Club there, uh, number 140. Alfta Ursa. Galina Vinogradova. No uh, Natalia Gempeler in that uh, Alfta Ursa team. She's done her last uh, run for that club, which was at Tiamila. She said it was quite uh, emotional to have that last run for her club. Look at that, we got some GPS. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Not very much GPS, but we can certainly show you something. Yeah, so this is uh, on the way to the 16th control. Uh, we have seen them punching at the 15th control, so this is the next one just after it. You can see that there is a small gap between uh, Boyantetti uh, leading uh, and this group and uh, the group with Göteborg Majona. Uh, at least uh, of the teams with a GPS device. Of course, there can be a few without. Oh, and now we have a gap. 31 teams through. Here's our next group. That visibility is so good at this point. Helsing and Sinister Yats just through. Halden, we have to see here. Mail Bouvier, Tisseran. We are still waiting here. We haven't seen Sturatuna yet, but I think they should come here soon. Yeah, they're number 32. Yeah, there they there come. We go. Uh, four minutes almost. That's a lot. It's a lot on the first leg. But of course, you still have three <laughs> more legs to get back to the leaders and uh, so I mean got Tova Alexanderson on the last leg. I mean, what, what, uh, you know, maybe later on in the broadcast we'll start talking about what kind of a gap she could make up. Like, what, what, what might be within bounds? <laughs> well, I and mean, what it might depends be without. very much on who the other, which the other teams are, of course. But um, shouldn't be much more than four or five minutes. I don't think uh, it, any here more on the than first that. leg because it uh, there is a risk that it will keep on developing in the same direction. Mm. And uh, it is hard to win back, yeah, three, four minutes on one leg. Yeah, to really kind of run through the fields and be running so much quicker than everybody else around you, it's really not easy.
Now we start to get closer back to the arena, so I think it won't be too long until we'll see them at the changeover. Let's see, about five minutes, six minutes maybe. Yeah, we're about 40 minutes through, 40 minutes running time so far. And this heat, I think, is probably going to make the winning time a little bit slower than we thought than we think than it's planned i mean it's it's both of course the temperature is very very tough for the runners but at the same time the marshes uh, i mean they're not existing oh yeah i mean they're, they're not wet are they at all yeah uh, you can't see i mean you you won't feel them you can no. see the the vegetation <laughs> growing on it that it there could be a marsh but uh, you will never feel one in in the yeah if you're running out there today now we are back I think it's Vestavix there in front. So Lena Eliasson, love. Not having a GPS device. So it's very hard to say uh, also from the GPS where we are at the moment or where the others are at least. <laughs> So we are at team 154, <laughs> seven minutes uh, after the leaders. And that's a tenth, that's a tenth of the teams through. Yeah. But it will take uh, more than another 50 minutes, I yeah. guess, <laughs> until we have everyone here. Absolutely. So very soon they're approaching the third last control and then it's only very short time left until they will show up at the arena again. to take a look at the GPS, see that uh, Linnea had uh, the only team taking quite a different route choice uh, here in the end, so it will be interesting to see how this is paying off. Okay, let's look into the forest then. We're waiting for the leaders to come out mm -hmm. of the forest. I think this is the, the cable for our little cable cam that we have, uh, which just runs parallel to the forest. You can also say, if um, Komoda, Denisa Kosova will hand over to Sara Schindlund, uh, Lena Eliasson to Elin Karlsson, leading her, Veronika Kalinina, Matlena Boström, from the top teams. IFK uh, Göteborg, Ingrid Lundanes will hand over to Simona Abersolt, uh, Iktisa, Sandra Grossberger to Elsa Kuse. Uh, and here we are. Here they go. With uh, just behind Sandra Grossberger. You can see they're on their way down the slope. I wonder if we can see them very soon in our picture. They've 
got they've been told exactly which last control they have um because there's two quite close together so they've got to punch the right one uh very very important but here we go here's this our leader is this is leading up yeah veronica kalinina and uh vesterviks lena yeah, elias of love but it will be the russian athlete living in sweden to take the quite glor good glorified title of Lee of winning the first leg of Benla. The Russian athlete who, for obvious reasons, can't compete on the international circuit. She can compete somewhere like this. This is, must have been a race she's been looking forward to for a long time. She punches the finish then and gets ready to change over to Madalina Bostrom. There we go. That's Lena Elias and Lou for hand, uh, punching the finish there. Next up, that's Igtisa Sandra Grossberger handing over to Elsa Kuza as well. We have uh, Hidden Kiatayat. There we go. Anna Karima is ready. That's the top four. And then a bit of a gap again. So these few runners having good speed coming down that hill towards the end. There's quite a long run out. And now. Uh, your run is not over until you have found the right map to hand over to your teammates. And the sixth team punching here in the finish, Uko Pan Orhus Hedvig Gudesen. Oh, I mean, that's just incredible. Start number 1,548. That is absolutely incredible there. That's probably, that's got to be the, my, the best run of, of first leg, really, coming from 1,548. Incredible. You can see there Simona Abersold in the dark headband just waiting for her incoming runner Ingrid Lundinez to hand over. Everyone calling out for the their teammate to come in and of course they will show the next leg runner the number of the map just so they can check it is exactly the right one it shouldn't be that hard for the number number one team to find their map but you never know and then this changeover is about to get extremely busy so you had 20 teams cross the line Number five there, Netherlands, Anna Ulvenson handing over to Alice Hugoson. There's Mora, Denise Kosova handing over to Sarah Schindlund. So uh, Mora were towards the start of this. Yeah, they were leading this course at one of the earlier TV controls. So maybe a few small mistakes towards the end. If you look at the top teams and the expected favorites still waiting for Tampere Purin to Kore, uh, Halden, Lachtens Unistajat, uh, Tisaren, Sturatuna, Södertälje, Ika Hakarps, Poikana, so those the teams with GPS we're still waiting for. Uh, yeah, a lot of those teams, I think, just coming down the hill right now. Yes, we might see, see them, them at the bottom of the picture, I think. See Halden and Tenu. Of course, a few other teams there as well. Järla, 3.46 behind. Uh, Pankrikanstad, Tullinge. And then we have Tisaren, 3.53. And we're still waiting for Stura Tuna. I think they will be here in about half a minute as well. And then it will be four and a half minutes. That's quite a bit. 
They definitely... We just saw quarter um, changeover, Vilma von Kruisenthurner. See the group with Järla heading over the map there. Pant Kristianstad and, and Tenui, uh, not the first team though. So now we're waiting for Stura Tuna. And we talked about the nerves of being on the the first on the the first leg, being standing, everybody waiting. What's it like on second leg when you're waiting for your runners to come in? You don't really know how good or bad a run they'll have had. You've got to be waiting there with everybody else. What's that like? I mean, usually you know more or less about the situation, about the development of of, of like the race. Uh, for example, in Sturatuna's case, I'm sure that the second leg runner knew about the situation that, uh, uh, I mean, Tilda Asperg, she knew that Rebecca Heinrup had problems in the beginning, for sure. The worst situation you can get into is also, when, if there's something Lina, happening IFK, just in the end. IFK leading SOK. First of all, Segern, gratis for that. Thank you so much. Was it something that you waited after, or something that you were ready for? Ja, men det var det var ett mål eh, absolut, men eh, jag brukar springa i sista sträckor. Så det var det var min andra gång när jag springer första sträckan och jag var jag var jättenervös. Jag visste att det blir inte lätt att vinna, men jag ville för riktigt. Så hörde jag det att Lena Boström berättade du hade bestämt dig att komma. Var det några svårigheter under vägen? Ja, men absolut det var jättesvårt. Eh, men jag tror att man måste bestämma att ja, jag vill vinna annars det går det inte att vinna. Men vi sprang som en grupp hela vägen så jag var alltid i ledning men eh, alla var med absolut. Sen blev jag trött och sprang i, inte först absolut. Men jag såg att, att alla har det nej inte lätt. Eh, sen var det en svår kontroll till slutet och jag, och jag tog det bara försiktig och visste alltid var jag är. Och sen tog en hand när jag såg att tjejer var lite osäker. Sen tog kontrollen först och sen sprang bara jättefort. <laughs> det gick jättefort, jättefint. Grattis ännu. Tack. Och uh, Hedvig Gudesen uh, från Pan Aarhus. You did, had to start with a really big number. <laughs> How did you do to get in uh, such a good place now to uh, change over? Um, I was uh, in the last line, yeah, and it was so many people I should uh, went in front of in the beginning and also the first five or six controls. <laughs> But uh, I was just uh, out on the right side and then just run so fast you can and uh, yeah see how many people you can uh, get and then we also have uh, the split uh, past one maybe or past two i'm not sure but some of the first controls and then uh, i only got uh, kind of a, a half or a third uh, yeah numbers of uh, the old people so uh, yeah slowly i get uh, up uh, to the the front but I, i didn't knew that i was so long in the front because uh, i didn't run with the group i didn't see the group the whole way and then uh, i just ran down there and i think okay maybe number 20 if it's good and then i'm number six it's really incredible <laughs> well that's that's absolutely amazing congratulations for the great job and both teams good luck for the today so i can just shortly translate or, or give you a heads up what the um, Veronica Karlinina said after winning the first leg, she said that she was very nervous uh, because she usually is used to run the last leg and now it's the first leg and it's something totally different when it comes to nervosity, uh, the level of it. Then she said that it was uh, very difficult to win the first leg, that, you, that she just decided that I want to win this and uh, otherwise she said it would be impossible to do so. Uh, she also mentioned that she had the feeling that everyone was there all the time, that it was just a big group and uh, she got the feeling that every, everyone is around her. And uh, there was uh, quite a difficult control in the end, so it started to be a bit nervous and she got the idea that she was maybe the quickest one getting an overview over the situation. That's why she was uh, so strong and in the end it was just running fast into the finish. So that's why she won the first leg, she said. Yeah, well, I guess if she's not used to running first leg, she's not used to having that experience of everybody around her. And, and therefore, it's going to be something that she's going to comment on, I guess. 
Um, whereas everybody else would go, well, yeah, of course you're going to see uh, lots, you know, lots of people uh, everywhere, even but on I mean, the first leg. It's still a bit special because, you, of course, you notice when you are in a smaller group if you're if you're opening a gap. And today it was not really the race where we have seen a smaller group getting away mm. from the others. I think that's what she mentioned. So it's, it was kind of that she she noticed that it is still one big group and one big line and not a smaller group getting away from the others. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, Hedvig Gudersen's absolute joy to have caught up from 1,558 to position six. She was like, I thought I'd be 20th and that was a great one. She definitely knew it was going pretty well, but six, that is incredible. I'm so glad we could hear from her because that's something quite special to have to do because they were late in entering. And I mean, uh, you mentioned it. Uh, we have now Kalinina as the winner of the first leg, but definitely the fastest one must yeah. have been uh, Hedvig Gudesen. Yes, from actually crossing the line to uh, the like chip time from crossing the line to crossing the finish. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the second leg is the shortest of all of them. Uh, just over five kilometers. So um, is that the one where you put kind of the weakest runner? <laughs> <laughs> you knew I was going to ask that question. No, I knew. Uh, you, you called like the, the, the runner from the shortest leg at TME now already, the, 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 the weakest one. And it's, it's a hard I thing know, to well do we've in got, the group. We've got a European champion, Simone Rabasold, running this leg. And she's yeah, hard. Exactly. You can't hardly so call her weak, can you? No, but uh, no, definitely not. It's... Um, I mean, you only have four runners in the team mm. at Venla. Um, it's not really a weak runner you put there. Maybe you put one that doesn't feel in shape, in the best shape of all of them. Or do you think that in the EFK Göteborg's uh, case, it could also be a tactic to try to open a gap, actually, because of what we have seen now in the first leg is there was no gap opening. Mm. So mm. it could be a tactic. It, it's so hard to say, but of course, usually you don't put your strongest runner on the second leg. Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> but that's, how, that's how a good observation. How do the tactics change then between something like um, actually? Let's let's watch some of the fa the first teams through here because this is Linné, and here is uh, Simone Abbasold, as we were just saying for IFK Gothenburg. Mm, Pia Jung Vik mm. for Linné. Mm, strong young Norwegian runner. Bjørsen. Marie Fasting, very experienced yes. elite runner. Boyan Tetti, Sara Niva, Iktisa, Elsa Kuse. Nydalen, Alice Hugesson, and Pan Orhus with Lotta Jau Hojervi Marcus. Second team for Eco Hawkeyes Poik. Another first team struggled quite a lot on the first leg. Uh, so this is quite a good situation for the second team. Yeah. Uh, maybe they can stay ahead of the first team. It's always when you get in this situation, you try to stay ahead as long as possible. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be Ella Pond. It's a lot of prestige. There. Yeah. Ifko <laughs> Jatteborg, second team. Uh, Erika Schelvik Löfven. Rasti Jussit, Johanna Kirkula. Lost a bit of time here in the beginning. Uh, was heading out in fifth position. And Kalevan Rasti, they have quite a strong team as well. Uh, Ida here. Hapala. In twelfth position, this is Jettebo Majuna. Uh, Pamion Rasti here, Tulia Viberg. Eleonora Alinder for Göteborg Majuna. They must have had a change there, last second change. Supposed to be Sabina Aumo. This is Vestavix, so they were in second place at the change. And this is uh, Calvin Rasti 2, I think.
two minutes now, and now you can see actually that there are small gaps opening. We have one there behind Paimian Rusty and Vestaviks, for example, and you can see that now it's one runner after the other coming in. Always an indication on that it might have been forked in the beginning. Yeah, as it splits everybody up. Here's Mora. Sada Shindland. They were in the lead for quite a long time with Denisa Kosova. She must have done a mistake there in the end, losing about two minutes towards the finish. This is Matlina Buström for leading her. Same here. Lost time, three minutes. Yes, because leading it, we're leading then, obviously. So, big drop for them. And... Uh, you know that four and a half minutes behind, we had Stura Tuna. So, let's see how it's developing for them. Remember uh, that number 32. Open Pirita and Halden. Anni Hanpe and Anna Toledo. Yep, Anna Toledo, probably probably the best Spanish um, female athlete at the moment. They've got a very, very international team with Lizzie Ingham from New Zealand up next. Emily Kemp just through there for Helsing and Sinisiat. Or waiting for other teams with GPS. Look up Spoiken Atisaran here in the picture. Also waiting for Stura Tuna in just a bit, I think. And here we have the leaders at the next TV control already, and it is uh, Simona Abersold, FK Jettebori, and uh, B. Johansson. Almost can't believe it <laughs> to be yeah. in second position. <laughs> you can really see how much she was looking around to try and see what the gap was. That's impre impressive stuff there. Mm, Marie Fasting. Oh, I mean, she, I mean, she hasn't been in this position maybe for a, for a good few years, but she, I'm sure she can bring it back out of her locker, running, running it towards the start of a relay. She's certainly done that before. We have four teams within 20 seconds, and now we can see that there is a gap. And this is a significant gap because this is getting up towards 40 seconds here, and still no view of anybody else. And even when the terrain really opens up nicely, then that's really where you might start to see uh, some gaps. New Dalens and uh, Poyan Tetti. Well, Alice Hugerson and Sara Niva. One minute and five seconds. Another gap now. This is Hakab's Poikena second team, Ella Palm, and Kalman Rasti first team, Ida Hapala. Uh, also, Kupan Orhus, and the IFK Göteborg, the second team. Rasti Yusit, next team to punch here into 11th position. Team within two minutes or almost two minutes. Now we are waiting 
får Göteborg Majorna. Uh, NTNUI. Paimion Rasti. Gutenberg Majorna. Ja. Yeah. Västerviks. Uh, Elin Karlsson. Paimion Rasti. Tulia Viberg. NTNUI, Ingrid Gullbrandsson. And uh, we are behind Simona Abersold and the IFK Göteborg. Yeah, just dropping straight down then towards this track. Mm. Coming off control off the eight. hill. On the way to control nine. I can see just how much speed she's managing to get up here. We can have a little good look in the forest and just how she keeps kind of getting kind of two, three, four second glimpses at the map to, there is a little bit of a route choice on a control like this one. In my opinion, maybe not the best exit from the control. Could have been more straight forward towards control nine. But the speed obviously is quite good. Yeah, the speed is really high and we'd, this is probably, I think this is pretty good team tactics here then from from IFK Gothenburg to put Simona Abbasalt on this second leg because she's got a bit of a gap. I mean, if you have enough runners to do so, yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah, but exactly. if you win the, like with two teams on Tio Mila, then you, then you have enough runners to do so. Definitely. Yeah, yes. They've got more than enough runners to do that and Yes, yeah, Simona Abbasal, I'm sure, will have been flying in from wherever she's been training in the hills in, in Switzerland, in the Alps, uh, ready for the World Championships. Frederick Stad, oh, here's something for Inter and Halden as well. So they're like four and a half minutes back now. There's a little group there. Leading her, the leader at the changeover. 4.45 behind 4.44. Sorry for that. And we're waiting for Stura Tuna, as always. <laughs> Uh, There's about six runners in that little group that just kind of came through, L leading there, Lard and Sinister Yats. We've also got Tampering Perinto, Frederick Stad, Halden, Ludinger. Like quite a, a group of kind of strong clubs just all there together. Here's Helsing and Sinister Yats, the Canadian runner, Emily Kemp. Calavan mm -hmm. Thor team. Uh, to 25th position. That's a good good start for the third team of Kalevan Rasti. So at Järla, Tampren Pyrito, third team, the, uh, they will have a fight here for the best third team. NTNUI, <laughs> second team, Kåre, Umeå, Tullinge, Pankrykanstad, Orion, Hidenkjertajat, Tiseran, Ona, Svaran, Hitto, Seura. That was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Pargas, Sunta i Veskila, second team, O Motion, first team, Alta Ösa. Josefin Heika. And uh, <laughs> yeah, some swearing there. And Stora Tuna as well. There she is. Just coming through now. <coughs> Six minutes. minutes. Now we are starting to reach that. I mean, it's not only two way, it's also Mario Lausen, but six minutes uh, compared to a very strong team from Gothenburg. I don't know. I'm pretty sure we'll have Sarah Hagström to come, and you know, she's a matching to Alex Allenson for speed as well. And here He's we can see mm. we had the TV control before at control yes. seven, so now they are on the way from eight to nine. Uh, and we saw. IFK Göteborg on the street just after mm. control eight, just to get you the position of it, the different runners. Yeah, so you can see she headed a lot more on the street, maybe by that um, out of bounds area where exactly. there's a tape in the line. And uh, she was heading a bit far towards the north, just out from the control, mm. if you compare to Linnea, almost uh, on the line, red line. So I think she. She lost maybe 10, 15 seconds there, but nothing serious. But even though you've just got form line contours around here, this part where Lune and uh, Ixtis are just climbing up here, the visibility is yeah. incredible. Even though you can see all of these tiny little contour shapes and little bits of vegetation change as well, it's 
I it's mean, you can see, really you good. can actually see every feature, yeah. even the small uh, hills there. And uh, here we are at the TV control. We already had at the first uh, leg at control 10. Uh, this one, this small bridge we have seen on the map before. And you still can see a big group here, big line from first leg runners. But now they approach from a different direction. Yes. Um, maybe not. A little small mistake, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can't see that, but we can see it on the GPS. Maybe we'll get to see it. But there's definitely a mistake for uh, Simona Abersolt, now caught again by Linnea. But they haven't found the control yet. This is really surprising because I had this control. I was slightly off. I saw a feature, the control that where they're making mistake. I saw a really, really tiny feature um, before it. And I thought, yep, yeah, that's where I am. And just it was mapped so well that I could see such a tiny feature in the mm -hmm. terrain and then make my... Uh, you know, make my way to the control, absolutely but fine. they are still looking for the control, and now I think we have them about a minute mistake already. There are more teams coming there. Iktisa now there as well, together with Yvke Göteborg. And I think they just punched the control now. So Linnea has to be very careful in order to not miss the train. But I think she got it as well. Uh, Pia Jungvik. Uh, New Dalen there as well now in the leading group. So we're looking now, this is the control after uh, the one where they've just been making a mistake. So and Exactly, they should come from the left here. So you can see them here. Here we go. It's still Simona Abersold, right? Yeah, yep. yep. Uh, but you can see there, were there are more teams others. to come as well. Yeah, she'd got quite a decent gap and then it's all got back and they can now see her as well. And here, <laughs> now you've you've got the the top teams or next to ones having a bit more difficulty and just all that passing of runners, you've got to, you're gonna give way, aren't you, to mm -hmm. these fast runners. This is Iktisa. Mm -hmm. And Sakusa having a good race here so far. Able to close that gap. And New Darlands. Punching in third position, 16 seconds behind Linnea and Bjorsen. Uh, all five of them within 21 seconds. <laughs> Waiting for the next team, punching right there, Boyan Tetti. <laughs> Sara Niva. Uh, so we have Kalamandrasti, Ida Hapala. <laughs> <laughs> Some cheering going on in the forest from the first leg runners. Small gap here after Kalamandrasti. To wait another few seconds, and then we should see Pan Orhus and uh, IFK Göteborg's second team, and then very soon also Giamuko. Yeah, this is Pan Orhus. I think you can see the long number just gives it away <laughs> straight away, as well as the quite distinctive coloured kits. Is this Hakob's Poikener as well? No, I think it's uh, IFK Göteborg and team number two. And soon, I think we'll see Göteborg Mayona. Yeah, there you go. With the zebra, zebra legs. Hookups poking at the just punching ahead. Also, Rusty, you sit. Uh, not wearing a GPS device. So we are. There haven't been too many kind of changes of uh, position really here between this and the last one. Mm, we are waiting for Vestebeeks. They were together with uh, Jotobel Mayon at the last TV control. Not showing up here yet. 
Just waiting for Paimi on the Rusty. This and might be Dendry. this other group kind of with Mora and Tampering Purinta, maybe this fast moving group here of, I think this is. And Tenui maybe, Paimi and Rusty. So hard to see when they don't wearing the club jersey. <laughs> yes, indeed. Rusty Karut, Ntenui, Paimi and Rusty. Waving into the camera. I just think it's so cool that, what, you know, whatever your orienteering ability, you're, you can say you've done the same course as the top runners. It's like everyone doing the same thing. You've, you've achieved that challenge. Oh, couple more second leg runners, I think, coming through here. And it should be Here coming we go. a group with Halden, Latin Soon is Dayat leading her, Tampere Pirinta. Then very soon as well, Stura Tuna. But still a few, maybe one minute to go for them. So here we have Latin Soon is Dayat, Tampere Pirinta. This but another kind of a nasty as well. Friedrich Stads. Halden. You can see that there is no emit in Spain, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Stora Tuna, number Turbi. 32. Mario Nappi. Turing was actually on the 42nd position at the last TV control. No, now they're up on 23. That's really impressive. Just a few minutes of running. Oh, here we go. Here's our leader again. This is. Simona Rabasold. And you can see that she's getting back to the line of first leg runners towards the finish soon. And can you use that line of previous leg runners? I wouldn't use it too I much, mean, to be you, honest. If you compare, if you look at the runners <laughs> there and you compare the possible ability of, or like the possible the skill level mm. you could expect, then I don't think that she will trust <laughs> anyone of that line there. I think that's fair. And but I, I mean, towards the control, of course, if you if you get close to a control and you see a, a line of runners heading towards it and you're sure that it is yours, it will help you to see the control But let's earlier. say if you're playing to your strengths, the route that you're, not everybody is going to go Simone Rabasol's route, nor should they. <laughs> No, I think mm -hmm. if you look at this route here, many of the others runner, other runners will follow the um, vegetation mm -hmm. boundary there in order to get a clear line to the next control. You can see that there is quite a big forking here, uh, but also very obvious that there is a gap again and an advantage for Jevko Jettebori. So climbing back up this hill as we just saw in the tracking there. For Abbasold, who has K. And as you can see, kind of the visibility change, the runability change as you get towards the tops of these hills. Okay, back towards, that's one of the early uh, controls, isn't it, on the second leg? Mm -hmm. Control number four, I think. Uh, now we are back again at the last TV control here. Uh, 
just had uh, all Norska second team was NMBU orientering. So the Italian Ukvan first team, Denzel and Tampen Pyrin to second team, and Niemen Ankuri. Many teams coming here now. But uh, we also have the top teams coming closer to the changeover. Uh, Simona Ebersold very soon at the third last control at the second part of this forking we have seen in the GPS and then 15 the common control and from there it's only uh, down the hill to the last control. So I think in about a minute we will see them. Although or we will see her maybe. Yeah, and um, Veronica Kalinina, the winner of the first leg, was talking about that it was kind of tricky, though, at at the last few controls. Um, you know, we, we n you never know what you can see. No, but I think it's it's mostly about that uh, it is forked and you head up on this plateau and you have to be careful to have the right direction. Now here it will be easier because you have so many of the other first leg runners around you, so I don't think you will miss a control up there. But uh, Simona Abersol has punched the second last control now. So I think very soon we'll see her on the picture towards the last control. Yeah, and she's got a different last control to everybody else who's finishing on the first leg. So we really surely will be able to see her kind of taking a little bit of a different route down through the terrain. Uh, and we can see our cameras just looking out for her now. I've got my eyes out into the terrain to see if we can spot her. Here we have her. Here she is. And you've got to get through the traffic here. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if she'll shout a bit. But you know, one thing here mm. is that for the chasing teams, it's impossible to spot the leader. I mean, mm. you see so many runners, That's but you don't true. see any of the leading teams. You can't really figure it out. Uh, unless you see the GPS rest, of course. But here she punches Simona Abersold in the lead after two legs. Fantastic running from her. There was a small miss at control number nine, but she's really managed to pull out a little bit of a gap then for IFK Gothenburg. Uh, she looks behind her to see where anybody else is and they're not there yet. She's had a fantastic run here. And this, she's managed to get a gap for her team. So there she goes, she's got to get the finish punch now and is going to go and hand over to Swedish runner Sanna Fast. Next up, and I wonder if we can spot some of the next runners. Here is uh, Simona Abasol, it's not going to be a difficult one for her to spot where her map is. She is number one, they are the defending champions. They are also the team media champions as well. And I mean, she had a good race, but she had a mistake of a minute or more, so the gap could be bigger and uh, will be interesting. We can see the New Dalen and Bjorsen still within half a minute. Also Ukulinea there. So we will have Helena Karlsson, Ingeborg Eide and Uda Schiele chasing Sanna Fast on the third and second last leg. So we wait for the next athletes to change over. You can see so them waiting there. Elsa Kuse punched there into fifth position. Alexandra Hornik will be running the third leg for the Lithuanian team. Uh, this is uh, Alice Hugoson for New Dalen, second team to head out Handed. on this third leg. Yeah, handed over there to Helena Carlson. There's. Uh, Linne Pierjanvik hands it over. And I think the next team, uh, at least next team with the GPS, Kalevan uh, Rasti very soon to the last control. Uh, and to finish. So yeah, a bit of a gap now here. A big gap, there's more than a minute after five Here's Calvin Rusty. Ida Hapala handing over to uh, Marie Katani, who I think is running, been selected to run middle distance on the relay for Finland at the World Championships. Not going to be running the long. She's a, I would definitely call her a middle distance specialist. There she is, just shouting there towards Ida Hapala. You 
can see she's got a compass in her hand. She's got a base plate compass in her right hand. Got a timing device in her left. Here's Ida Hapala. And again, another... Hap so Calvin and Ratti kind of in a bit of a gap by themselves. And to the next group of GPS team, CFK Göteborg's second team, Panarhus and Poyantetti. So it looks like Calvin Rusty and Marie Katani, they've got a minute clear in front of them. They pretty much, they've got over now a minute behind them. Here's Rusty, Rusty Yusitz, next team to punch the finish. Mm -hmm. Johanna Krikula will hand over to Laura Rinkineva. And uh, for IFK Göteborg, second team, Erika Kjellvik Levén will hand over to Johanna Kjellvik Levén. And this is a replay of the GPS. Uh, and we see uh, small problems for Calvin Rusty. Uh, into the control, Oof. but also direction out from control K towards the 15th control on this second leg. So uh, an explanation on why they are just between the two groups there and not within the group in front of them. And is that about, you know, we, we will see, I think, more mistakes towards the end of the courses, won't we? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, it's a bit both uh, the terrain itself when you get up this plateau it's always difficult either if it's flat or green uh, and the beginning of the course is is not very dense green at least so I think uh, with fresh legs and uh, not uh, quite good visibility shouldn't be a problem for the runners so now we also have the changeover for uh, Paimen Rasti and Jettebal Majorna, first team. Tulia Viber for Paimen Rasti hand handing over to Inga Dambe and Eleanor uh, Alinder, uh, changing over to Lili Graber, Swiss runner for Jettebal Majorna. Five minutes past now. I think soon we will have uh, Stura Tuna uh, to the finish, and then they will send out uh, Marie Ulausen. It will be very interesting <laughs> to follow. It really, really will be. There's a few runners who've taken the wrong lane here. I was getting really confused seeing some the high numbers up there. And Turvik, Turvik now into 17. Very strong performance here by Mario Nabi. Ladin Sinisayat, just finishing there. Sana Kaupila, Tampurin Perinta, Ani Hanpa, gonna hand over to Saila Kini. I think they've got a Ven Lahayu on their last leg. Now we have the Stura Tuna. Punching there, five minutes and Simona 18 Ebersa, seconds. Simona Ebersal, DFK Göteborg, what a wonderful run. <laughs> you left uh, 46 seconds after the leader. Where did you see the other girls and how did you pass? They yeah, were all together in the beginning. And then I kind of got some gap um, on some long leg. But then, yeah, I <laughs> made a mistake, quite a big one at the next control. So everyone came from behind. But yeah, I felt really well physically all the way. So uh, yeah, I just tried to push really hard in the end and find all the controls without any mistakes. So it was really nice and I enjoyed it all the way. <laughs> they have told that it's really difficult orienteering and when you do it, it looks really easy. But apparently it wasn't. <laughs> so what kind of uh, tips do you have to other runners that are still going there? I think it's really important to have control of the direction all the time and see all the small details on the way and then yeah you're sure you hit the control on the right way but for your team it looks really nice and let's hold the thumbs up yeah i'm really looking forward to look at the race now and uh, yeah i have full trust in my teammates <laughs> that you should have congratulations for the great run thanks a lot Oh, she makes it sound so easy, doesn't she? Oh, all you have to do is get the direction right, read all the little features, and you'll be fine.
Yeah, and I mean, uh, but she has a point because the map is really, oh. really accurate. It's really good. When you run on it, you, you I mean, you, there is no way you can put any blame on the mapper if you do a mistake here. Uh, it's such a good map, and I think that's what she meant. You see everything. Yeah, yeah. I, we both came back from our run separately and said the map is really, really great. I think um, we both, it, exactly that. It, it just kind of, I feel it just kind of makes sense in the terrain, but you've also, you've even got small little points of vegetation change marks, and you could see it in the terrain as well. Um, so it just seemed like everything that you could see was actually mapped. It, I just found it really enjoyable to, to run through. Got a lot of the third leg runners just warming up, just trying to see if they can spot their runner. And it, I mean, it is so warm out there. You can see the pictures are. Uh, you know, you can see the sun shining, but when you're in that heat, uh, I, I would say it's probably high 20s. It's it's really sapping. It's it's not easy to deal with. And, and the thing is also when you're running, the the forest is quite open at many parts. I mean, always when you run on this uh, open rocks on the top of the hills, you're running directly in the sun, and it's it's tough to do that with high intensity running and have the sun and the temperature so yeah it, it is warm today it is well at least we've had a you know it's not uh just suddenly turned warm we've had quite a lot of warm weather over northern europe uh of course for the last week or so so uh hopefully people are starting to kind of adapt to that certainly these you know, these elite runners will have been doing, they do their winter training out down in places like Spain and Portugal. Uh, some even go as far as uh, Kenya, Ghana, South Africa for warm weather, high altitude training as well. So these guys certainly are used to it. And uh, the runners on the third leg have been out now for almost 11 minutes and thinking about a bit more than a minute that we will see them at the first TV control. Fantastic. This third leg is between six and a half and 6.6 .6 kilometers. It is yeah around the same distance as the first one. Obviously, the last leg is the longest. Expected time, winning time on this leg is 46 minutes. As things really start shaping up then for the for the the burnout, I guess, on the last leg. And, you know, no relay is is one. It's the old proverb from orienteering. You never win a relay on, on the first few legs. Just but about you, saying many in relays have been lost on the first two legs. Absolutely. No, but uh, I mean, the interesting part here on this third leg will be, I mean, obviously, if uh, Göteborg is able to actually keep or even let the gap grow here on this one. But it will also be interesting to see if if there is any team behind that can kind of get closer again, because mm -hmm. we had the second leg, as you mentioned before, many teams might not have had their strongest runner on the second leg but now the third leg fourth leg it really changes uh, for example then uh, stura tuna now with uh, two world class athletes on the last two legs uh, will be very interesting to follow how it develops a bit behind as well 
Yeah, we'll have our eye on team number 32. And now I think we <laughs> might have just missed the punch here. Uh, yes, indeed, 20 seconds ago. Jefke Göteborg punched there. Sanna fast. <laughs> Say hello to the cameras. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now we've got 30 second gap. So what was the gap at the changeover? It was 29 seconds. Okay, so the gap certainly has grown. And Netherlands, uh, Bjorsen, Linné, Iktisa. Uh, Iktisa, 46 go. seconds behind. Uh, but Iktisa actually was heading out almost 50, 45 seconds behind. So they are going Matching the at speed. the same speed. Yes, indeed. Uh, New Darlands, Helena Carlson into third position. And I think we will have to wait a bit. Oh, we don't know about Bjorsen. Uh, there's no GPS device on Ingeborg Ede. So that's the runner we are waiting for. Otherwise, we are waiting for Linné and uh, Kalevan Rasti. So still waiting. The time ticks up another minute. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look as if uh, now we are with the leader, yeah. with Sanna Fast. Oh, and you can see I uh, like under her feet, the kind of tracking up here on this section. You can also see that there's a spare compass. Yeah, exactly there. <laughs> yeah. And, it's, and that's because, it's a, is there a height? How often do compasses actually get broken? Does everybody run with uh, a second compass? All not of the top very teams? often, but it's a ah. pity if it happens Taney, when you need it. Through. And we missed a couple of runners again there. Mm, Bjorsen, Linnea and Kalevan Rasti, uh, more or less together here, three of them. Yeah, but to get back to the compass question, I mean, it's... <laughs> I mean, it doesn't happen very often. You're not lost without compass either. You have many features here, but... I mean, it's not very hard to have one with you. So in case it happens, you have one. Uh, it's a little bit obvious, but it's... It, if I would choose between having a spare lamp in the Yukula relay mm. and the spare compass, I would always go for the lamp. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me. Yeah, you really. I was about to say you're really lost with that one, and then I, then I realized that was that was too much of a pun, and then I just went with it. But anyway. uh, I mean, we have heard Simon Aberson talking about how important it is to have the right direction here, mm. and it is it is very helpful to have a compass. So it's it's good to have a spare one with you. Very soon, we expect Poyan Tetti come to this change over uh, to this TV control. I think we'll miss her again. Yeah, as we're back with Sana Fast. Can keep you updated about the punch uh, at the TV control. And we're in a big section of kind of different forkings. Everybody going completely different ways on this section but you get a chance to see all these kind of bigger and smaller yeah. hills. Here we have Poyantetti, Anna mm. Hataya. Uh, a bit less than four minutes behind. And soon we are waiting for Pan Aarhus. Here, Here she, she comes, is. yeah. Yeah, there you go, in the shorts. So have, uh, I think, Antenui and Paimian Rasti. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's Antenui, number 15. And here's, no, here. Number yes. nine there, Paimian Rasti. Rasti. Inga Dambe and uh, NTNV with Anu Tuomisto. Uh, Kupana Aarhus with Caroline Götterup. Mm, Rasti Jusit. Rasti Jusit punching there into 11. And here we are actually waiting for the leader at the yeah, next TV she control. Is. Yeah, uh, that's the one at the bridge. There's Sana Fast. Yeah. 
So a very short time only between this first and second TV control, just about five minutes of running. We have uh, uh, DFK Göteborg, second team, uh, Johanna Kjellvik Löfven. And the next team, I think, will be Tampere and Pyrinta. That's... Tanshinter, Saila yep. Kinney and uh, Westervik, Agnes Nörgard Kracht. Very soon we will have Stora Tuna here as well, but then it's... Uh, she lost time again, actually, because she pun they punched 5 minutes and 18 seconds behind now. It's almost 6 minutes. And as we are talking... About Suratuna, we had Iktisa, one minute and two seconds behind. Also, Nydalen. There's Nuyo Larsen. Suratuna, yes, yeah, six minutes down, so losing time. The next teams uh, we're looking for at the later TV controls. So the insert, Linné, Bjorsen, Calvin Rusty. Rusty Karahut. Six. 30 behind and uh, Giemuko, Jettemann Mayena should be there soon. There yeah, they are. Lizzie Ingham there for Halden. Ah, we have some more tracking then. Let's have a little look at this longer leg here. We are live now, so you can see the tail is about, it was exactly 30 seconds, so that looks like at, at least a, about a minute's gap, I'd say still. Let's head back to the bridge, this is the later one. There's it. Mm -hmm. We had Calvin the Rusty punching there, Marika Taini. Uh, Linné. About two and a half minutes behind. Here we have the times now, Linné and Bjorsan. Ingeborg Ada crossing that bridge, just going out of shots. So Marika Taney's caught up from sixth to fourth. Bjorsen dropping down third at the changeover, now down to sixth. And then I think there's quite a big gap then after these three. Mm, the next one to expect there is Poyantetti, but it should be more than a minute left. Actually quite hard to say. Okay, so we can see these routes here towards the ninth control. Mm, you see and a maybe possible projected route. route. And actually that's something there, the, those vegetation border, borders, they're quite clear in the terrain. So usually you have kind of a track just beside them. So even mm. if it looks as if it's green there, uh, to the right in the running direction, it still might be quite fast. Uh, but here is... I mean, it's it's a good way because you get out to the street and then you get this small track and then the vegetation boundary, which actually isn't following. Mm. Uh, but you also have to keep in mind that the forest, when it's wide, it's quite open. So I, there's no really need to go around there. You can stay on the red line as it is. I think that's totally fine. Yeah. And this is a part actually where we had the first leg in as well. was the part they skipped on the second leg, on the shorter shorter second leg. Here we had Ukampan Aarhus and uh, also we had a Point bit that day as well. Yeah, before there. So yeah, those two, well, it's kind of till 20 seconds between those two teams. So I would not at all call them a group. Here is team number nine, Pamion Rasti. 
in Gedamba. There's Ente Nui, Anu Tuamisto. Those two teams very close. Uh, IFK Gothenburg 2. Mr. Weeks. Blood and Sinister Yat, Elisa Matula. Tampere and Pirinta, Saila Kinney, punch there. And Stura Tuna, 6.29, still losing time. Another 25 seconds here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> On those uh, five minutes of running. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, that team really needs to have been on this leg gaining time, I no, think, on the, the leaders to I give think, uh, Tova Alexanderson a shout of doing The problem is, leg. I mean, we have seen Tova Alexanderson uh, closing gaps bigger than six minutes. Uh, remember Tia Mila in Gothenburg. I think the gap there was about seven or eight minutes almost, but you didn't have that many teams in between then. Mm. So then they were maybe heading out in sixth or seventh position. Now they are in 15th position. There's so many teams that can perform well. I mean, if, in order to close a gap of six minutes, you need mistakes of the runners yeah. in front of yeah. you. And it's more likely to have five runners in front of you losing six minutes than 14 runners. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I think the chances now they mm, also w when you look at the trend that uh, like the development of the of the time they're losing she's still losing time she's not winning back time and uh, doesn't look too good for the Sturatuna. His Halden also had the Atabal Mariana uh, in between mm -hmm. and the Rusty Karut. And as we saw on the GPS, they're now in this uh, kind of extra loop compared to the second leg. And uh, it will take another, let's say, three, four minutes until we'll see the first teams at the next TV control. Helsing and Sinister at Tulinger both just going through there. Now back down to eight minutes. But I mean, if we look at the result list here at this TV control and look at the gaps, we mm. still have about six teams within three minutes. We have three teams within one minute and seven seconds. Still very open. We have seen that Simon Abersold was doing a mistake in a, uh, towards the end in a slightly green area. So it's, I mean, the gap isn't that big that we would say that it's quite likely that it's over. It's still an open race. We still have one and a half legs to go. And then, and still within that, you know, a lot of those teams may well be happy with the top 10. I don't know, a lot of the teams do want in there do really, really want to win, but they might they might go, okay, a top five, top ten. Uh, and then it's going to, you know, they, they've still kind of got something to race for compared to the teams alongside them. Now we're back with the GPS. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. Uh, many of the teams would have been okay with the top five. Now, if you, if you look at the top five here, I think most mm -hmm. of them would have been Orik Tisa, Nydalen, Calvin Drasti, mm -hmm. Linnea. 
Yeah, they would have been okay satisfied with top five, but if you are in the fight for the victory, <laughs> all you want to win it's is only the victory. The context, right? So I think it's it's not really right to say that they would be okay to get the fifth position now when they actually have the chance for more. And here we are at control 12, but it's still about two minutes to wait. Mm -hmm. Just recap of the standings there and the gap. You can see here, it's, it's very obvious in the picture that it's greener in this yeah. bit than it was compared to the first TV controls we have seen. Uh, yeah, you can just kind of <laughs> see. I, I guess, you know, you'll, you'll see in the edge of the trees, it all looks quite dense compared to when you're actually in it. But um, yeah, it looks fairly dense. Just at try point. to think about what I can say here. Yeah. But it's, um, <laughs> I know, because you ran through this bit. What, yeah, w one thing that it's... Uh, when you read the map and you see the different kind of greens, you have, you have the semi-green, uh, semi-dense green, and you have the slight green. And uh, you look at it at the map, and sometimes you get a bit surprised when you get there because it's very much depending on what kind of green it is. Mm -hmm. If you have this, uh, the green here, or you ha if you have the the like kind of smaller leaf trees, mm -hmm. then it seems more open, but it's still going to uh, slow you down and lose the Yeah, visibility. exactly. So, but yeah. it's it's. This one here is definitely denser than other greens, but on the map you can't really see the difference, mm. and that makes it hard to plan. Uh, so in in a few bits you get a bit surprised about the fact that it doesn't seem as green as it is on the maps, and in other bits you get a bit surprised uh, in the other way around. Well, yeah, I mean it's not gonna that's not gonna be too much of a surprise for the athletes. I mean the course setters have said they want to take take the runners into kind of different parts of the terrain, uh, areas with kind of different characteristics, different types of vegetation, different types of trees and everything. So I think that's, um, you know, n that's never really a surprise for, for this. No, tool. no, but I mean, it, it's a surprise when you expect a semi-green area and you see something that you could imagine being a uh, light green as well. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's the leader. Here's Santa Fast. Making light work of this. She's alone in the forest. Mm, she has and been alone before. One minute and three seconds. The gap was at the last TV control. And 107 compared to New Dalen. But I can tell you, it's not going too well for the two of them. Struggling with the control just before this one. Yeah, because it was Igtisa, Nudelen, then a bit of a gap before Calavan yeah, Rusty, Linnae, One Bielsen. and a half minutes. Yeah. You can see back with some GPS, but you don't have those teams there. So we are waiting now. But as I said, there was a mistake uh, of those teams, Nudalen and Igtisa. So we might have to wait a bit longer than one minute and three seconds. Yeah, the time ticks up. We're approaching the one minute mark and we still can't see any athletes approaching this control. This is control number 12 for them. So struggles for Calavan Rusty and Linné. So I think soon the next team still will be Nudalen and Dictisa, but as you can see, the gap is growing. Mm. It really, really grows, approaching a minute and a half. Mm. wonder if we can hear somebody coming. <sighs> New Dalen with uh, more problems. Uh, but I think Iktisa will be here very soon. Here we have her. Uh, Alexandra Hornik, punching in second position, lost about 40 seconds here. That was about uh, the mistake she was doing there. Uh, 40 seconds, I would have guessed it was. Where's now, New Dalen? They struggle at the control before. It was very close, actually, but not really far enough. So, uh, but she punched now and should be here in about a few here seconds. Here it is. Uh, this is Helena Carlson. Yep. Two minutes and eight seconds behind. So, lost about a minute. So now we are waiting for Kalevan, Rasti and Linné. Uh, both of them struggle a bit as well. Seems to be the 
quite a tricky one here. Tricky bit, and as we mentioned before, it's because it's a bit greener just yeah. around there. Yeah, your orienteering has to be so accurate um, in terms of direction, but also if you're going to slow down your any thought about pacing is going to be uh, much yeah. harder to achieve. Here we go. Here's Marie Kataini. Yeah. There she is for Calvin Rasti. And followed very, very closely by Linné. Lost about half a minute, mm. both of them. Yeah, Odashila. Let's have a look then. Let's have a little replay then of this mistake. Mm. This is uh, the control before the one we've just seen. And you can see that and they kind of yeah. had the wrong direction and then had the troubles relocating in the green bit there. And I can tell you, another team with big <laughs> troubles, and <laughs> Tianhui, uh, not r quite at the right spot. Yeah, they're kind of stopped and going a little bit around in circles, mm. uh, maybe 100 meters or slightly even more from where they're meant to be. It, so. it depends on where they <laughs> are meant to be, but probably, yeah. <laughs> well, I think they're meant to be at the control, yeah. <laughs> and they're certainly not at the control. So we'll take that one for and free. It actually, it doesn't look as if she knows where she is and she's not quite right no but um, let's take Bjorsen here into sixth position for all seven so also Bjorsen lost about a bit more than a minute mm. but there's a whole load more teams kind of almost scatter gunning their way into this uh difficult section now but let's it's take the leaders then this is uh Santa fast. this is Santa fast indeed heading up uh, towards the top of this hill, this, the, this is where the visibility is so high. And you can see here, this is maybe where we had Simona Abbasold earlier on on the camera. You can see there's, I guess, different route choices here to play with different parts of vegetation. And uh, before we had more of the teams going uh, slightly more to the north. We remember that it is mm. Simona Abbasold had quite the same route choice as we see all of them ha having now. What are teams decided to go to the left to the hill there where we have linear now yeah but you could stick much closer to the line and go uh, kind of use those streams and stuff as well here's Santa fast and back with the leader she's still got a second compass Ooh, which is just kind of slowing down slightly here i think she's looking for a the boulder. As you can see, um, it's also a bit denser here around this control. And it's actually something you described very well in the beginning, that the controls uh, very punched. Usually when you get to Yukla, you have so many uh, punching devices that you, it's easy to see mm. the controls when you enter the circle. Mm. I didn't get that feeling either, as you described it earlier. It's really, they place them incredibly well oh so yeah you have exactly like this setup you have I mean, here it's, it's, it's something this, this different is, this uh, is because not it's here here control. you can see quite well uh, in advance uh storatuna up into 10th now up, for, up from into 10th from 15th mm, so now she is having the same speed again so some of the boulders are like the size of a small car certainly the size of my small car i think and they're <laughs> hidden like just the other side but the control kite and this whole like wooden setup with all the punches are all hidden the other side of the control so you i was certainly approaching and obviously i was running there with nobody else around me approaching a boulder going i think this is the right boulder and was very very relieved to find it just over the other side So you can see some of these teams climbing at this point uh, have had certainly fewer troubles uh, in this section of slight green and our climbing places. We've still not had Ente Nui through there. I wonder if we can have a little quick look back on the GPS. Have they got that control yeah, they were no, looking they for? Got they it, have but got they it, yeah. just got it now, so yeah, it's a just. big mistake. I think a good Must have been three, four minutes. Yeah, a good five, at least kind and of five to ten the teams overtaken picture them. Up to the right, we already mm. see Santa Fast approaching the next TV control at 15th. control 15. Uh, it's the one we have seen on all three first legs. 
Yeah, there she goes. Already through on that control. Gap before 142. So there is a bit of time left until uh, we have Iktisa and probably Nudalen to this 15th control. And behind here we had to That's should have had we just there. Yes, and uh, oh, I hoped for the replay. What's happening oh. to Kalevan Rasti? Uh, maybe something with the equipment or some problems. Something got stuck. Are they going back? Not in that speed. No, they're still making they're, they're still making progress towards the thirteenth control. Yeah, strange. Would be interesting to hear what happened. It I wonder it could be something some like you dropped your compass or your timing device and had to find it. If you dropped the compass, you don't. Yeah, maybe well, if you, maybe if, if, you yeah, if you drop another one. Yeah, but if you drop the your, device, if you drop your maybe, emits, yeah. then that could be tricky. This is Igtisa, Alexander Hornik. the Polish athlete, going to hand over to compatriot Hanna Wisniewska. And for this Lithuanian club, a lot of international runners in there. Very, very strong. See the time there, but the next control will be the split time. So still a few seconds left. 142 was the gap before. It's quite a good race, actually. Uh, beside this mistake just uh, before the third TV control. 136. That, but that seemed quite well established, running a couple of uh, races in the Finnish Relay League as well. So, And here we're waiting for New Dalen, and then mm. Carlson, but I think she lost a bit of time. Not really having the same mm. speed as uh, Hornik. She's 2.08 behind. Interesting, actually, because it, I think if we change the camera angle here, we will soon see Linnea. And, uh, Linnea I think that is Linnea. Yeah. I'm not sure where we're about a minute Rasti behind then. Uh, New Dalen. Yeah, we have seen Kalavan Rasti doing this ah, stop yeah, of thing. Course. So New Dalen was uh, 3.05 behind. Five for Linnea, and now it is. Ah, here she is. Here's Marie Katani. Two fifty-seven. Uh, she, she's doing something strange. There, she doesn't seem too focused. Did a small mistake at this control. Just overshooting it. Let's see if we can. But anything doesn't seem to have any problems injury wise at least. Wait dirty she is, maybe she fell. Yeah, I hope but I, I think it must have been quite a bad fall if if that was the problem because she lost like 30 can't seconds. Can't the whole really tail be. of the GPS caught up with her. So very confusing. It's never Ooh. a good thing if, if there you're... There we go. That was the mistake then that we were seeing on camera from Santa Fast at control number 13. Yeah. A small mistake with direction from New mm. Dalen. And now look at Calvin Rasti as well. Just overshooting the control a little bit here. Yeah. There we go. That's what you can and see. And got yet the body. <laughs> Maybe... A I mean, you could, you can run very straight there, but New Dalen, oh, that's not necessary I think it's too because it's to go very open for yeah. us there. BUSM 403. Yeah, Kalavan Rasti lost about uh, 50 seconds. So look, I think it's Poyentetti we're looking for next, and Anahatia. Yes, well, I think she'll be coming through next. Number eight. And then we also have uh, Pan Orhus. She's behind and Stura Tuna. 
the Vestavix as well. Yeah. There's yeah, another, ah, that's another daughter mistake. Tuna. Also overshooting the control. Here, Anna Hataya for Poyantetti and Agnes Nurger Kracht for Westerviks. And back with. Oh, now it's. Mm, that doesn't look good because the tail is short and the direction is wrong. This. Yeah, uh, that's wonder. quite strange. I mean, I said it before, the direction wasn't too good there, a bit far to the left. You can stay quite close to the red line. Uh, as I mentioned before, New Darland, I, in my opinion, the route choice too extreme. I, I like the, the one Iktisa is choosing, and I'm worried for Sanna Fast in this part there. Well, you do have to say, for this GPS tracking, the vegetation is not quite accurate. So it is a lot denser there than uh, it shows on the screen. Um, so you have to kind of bear that in mind a little bit. You have to take what you see with a bit of pinch of salt, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> but that's certainly a mistake there, definitely. It is certainly a mistake, and she might be saved by the fact that she is quite close to the finish. I think so. You can probably hear the <laughs> the commentary going on and, yeah. and and use that to be honest. That's a bit of help there, but she definitely lost time. The question is how much it is because the gap was 136. Uh, my guess is, I mean, it wasn't too. It could have been worse. Uh, question is how good she whether she's whether able she's to control. relocate. Yeah. And. Uh, also, if she lost a lot of self-confidence for this last bit or not. Here is Paimian Rasti in 13th. Uh, Inga Dambe. Uh, would be interesting to get back to the GPS a bit. Because not very satisfied with the direction of Iktisa either. Mm. So maybe in the end it was a good uh, choice from Nudalen and Linnea. Let's see. I think this is quite a hasty look at the arena now because there's uh, I don't <laughs> they've still got a good couple of minutes, I think, before we see them and potentially a few more mistakes going on out there as well. So we wait with basic breath at the finish to see if we can see the leaders and actually who will come through in the lead. We're still not very... Here we go, let's have a look now because... Mm. You see that it's also a weird direction. direction and, and, and now the, dip, yeah. the, like, the danger thing is now if uh, yet the boy is climbing too much, oh, but here, here she, she is. is. So she's made this control then, I think. Yeah, but this she is, lost time. This, yeah, definitely. definitely. And I think it won't take too long until... I mean, it depends on how good Tisa is approaching this control, but my guess is that, we, that it's, we're talking about 25 seconds, maybe 20. And again, this is, this is mistakes at the end where maybe people are just in the red too much you're getting fatigued you're getting exhausted but there's still like two more controls to go well one proper control another half control which is just down the hill towards the end and you've got to you've got to still keep this together and not make another mistake i think we're talking about the gap now of 25 seconds yeah. it would be very important for Iktisa, uh, for Alexandra Hornig, to close this gap a little bit in order to give uh, Hanna Wisniewska the chance to at least see Sara Hockström when she's running out on the last leg. Oh, and you can just see she's just stopped. Yeah, again. I think it's seeing those people as well. And of course now she's going to not trust herself quite as much as she used to but There's again this is example again if you're you're so close to the control but it's just really nicely hidden there we'll check her codes really carefully then down towards the arena let's see if we can see her dropping down uh now she's there, there we can see her yes it is yeah she's towards the right of the picture we haven't caught her on the picture yet we can see her here in the arena here she is. Here she is. There we go. Looking slightly in the wrong place there. 
as she punches the control. And this is Sana Fast. So she will send it out with the lead. The lead grew to a minute. The lead grew to even more than a minute. And then that mistake on the 16th control, the long leg going too far to the left. And the big question now is how big is the gap between Sanna Fast and Alexandra Hornig? Because if it is uh, under, let's say, 30, maybe 20 seconds, it would be a chance for Hanna Wisniewska to get uh, a glimpse of Sarah Hagström. Uh, not perfect approaching to the control for Iktisa either at uh, second last control. So I think we are up again on more than a minute. Well, we will see. We'll see as the seconds climb. You can see Sana Fast wearing bib number one. They are the defending champions. They are also winners of Tia Mila. Nice. And she's just going to pass a few runners here. No problems to find her one. Let's see if we can see the runner from Iktisa dropping have, down as well. We have Iktisa coming to the finish. Yeah, there we go, 37 seconds is the gap. Yeah, and the gap before, I mean, if you look at the development, 103, 142, 136, and now 37. <laughs> but Sara Hagström is handed over in the lead, and she may well at the moment be, I'd say I put her in the top two best orienteers in, in the women's uh, race at the moment. Um. But and we also have uh, New Dalen and Linnea getting towards the finish now. And we can say that it's not only the top teams that struggled with this third last control. So we have many teams behind as well. Pan Aarhus, Stora Tuna, Latin Sunis Dayat. They all struggled with this um, control 16. But uh, Igtisa and Hanna Wisniewska starts her race with the biggest smile on her face. You could take it as having the most pressure on you, chasing into second, but she sees this as an opportunity. This is very exciting. And again, this is what we were talking about. This is the same control that we saw the leaders make a mistake on. Yeah, and you see that Pan Orhus and Stura Tuna, they are in trouble and... Uh, the, the thing is that they won't do a very big mistake because, yeah, as I mentioned before, they're close they're to the close finish. To the arena, yeah. yeah. Here's uh, Nudelens and uh, Linne. Going to hand over here now. So for Linne, Johanna Oberi. For Nudelens, Anna Margrethe Hauske Nordberg. The 40, I want to say 43 year old. Here's uh, Marika Taney just handing it over here now. Yeah, I, I feel like she must have fell. Um, for Calvin Rasti, she was basically with those two teams in front, has lost a minute. Oh, also, I think we saw her make a couple of mistakes too. But some some uh, casualties from the 16th control. They still haven't made it there. And uh, I can also say that uh, now we have other teams with struggles to the 16th control. Uh, NTNUI, Paimion Rasti, uh, Stura Tuna still hadn't got the control there. Poyantetti, small problems to 17. Panor, who's still not at control 16 either. So this uh, seems to be a tricky one. Yeah, Calvin Rasti there, Mian Ittenen just heads out onto the course. About a minute. Uh, gap between Linne and Calvin Rasti, between fourth and fifth. But still, I think within a shout of a medal position as we head on to the longest leg. You can see the team number 82 just waiting there. Now we have more teams uh, to the Finish. Yeah. Uh, we had Pius on punching there. Ingeborg Eide, 3.40 behind. Uh, good finish there by Pius. Uh, one of the teams have, that haven't had any problems to control 60. Now we have Poyan Tetti, Latin Sunistayat, and Sun Tamperen Purinto approaching the finish as well. Here we have Poyan Tetti, 4.12 behind. Still struggling at control 16, Pan Orhus. 
and then Tianui. Stura Tuna has gotten the control now on the way to the 17th, but it will will have to wait another 80 seconds for her. So you can see SK Poyantetti and uh, Lord and Sinister Yacht seat numbers eight and six waiting at the gate there. And Kyoshinomi and Minakaupi. We had Vestavix and Tampen and Pyrinto, the two last teams into the top 10 for 46 for Tampen and Pyrinto. And uh, Sila Kinney uh, climbing from position 20 to position 10 then on that leg. I think that was more other people making mistakes and she managing to keep a pretty clean run. And here, yeah. look at the mistake of Bano Waters. <laughs> she is really not... I mean, it's so hard there, but the thing is, you were so close to the arena. You should just invest a few seconds in order to relocate. And she, I mean, now she's very close, but she's basically still standing there a few meters away from the control. Might get a bit of help now by other teams. Uh, but this was a huge time loss. Uh, we are also soon have uh, Stura Tuna to the finish and still six minutes. I don't know, six minutes. 5.55. Well, I think there's a potential for Stura Tuna to climb more places, but when you've got Sara Hagström on the last leg for EFK or Jutteberry, then then you, like those two have been I, kind of matching each other for speed this season. I, I agree. I mean, if you if you look at the runners between one and eleven, there's a chance to take a few positions. But if you compare to Alex Anderson and Sara Hoxton from this season, there's no reason to believe that anyone would be faster than the other one. Yeah, yeah. They've been really, really kind of equal. Maria Olausen, there you go, handing over to Tova Alexanderson. She is off into the terrain and the seconds climb up as well. So very soon, I think we'll see Antenui coming to the finish. Uh, if they head into them, now we have them. 7.27 behind, and Calavan Rasti, second team as well. Uh, so Anu Tuomisto heading over to Anne Durkorn and uh, Siri Silvenoinen. This is Pamir and Rasti punching now. Yeah, Inga Dambe will send out Milia Vetaya. Uh, just to make it complete, Siri Silvenoinen will head hand over to Vera Laksovita. And now we got Pan Orhus to the finish. Mm. She will be very relieved to punch the finish line here. Eight minutes and five seconds behind. Yeah, that's Carolina Jutterup. But gonna hand over to Andrina Benny Minson. Again, really strong last leg runner. top Norwegian uh, international who'll be waiting at those world championships. Fast finish here for team number 10. That's Helsing in Sinisteriat. Mila Matila going to hand over to the Estonian European medalist Evely Karsaku. So have team number 13, Rasti Kahut, uh, Jenny Oyala, handing over to Mira Kaskinen. Jonas, you've just been having a little look at the GPS of this uh, fourth and final leg. Oh, let's have a little chat, I think, maybe to uh, the leader, uh, current leader.
var ganska svajigt hela vägen egentligen. Jag gjorde små krokar på flera kontroller och sen en jättestor bom här på slutet. Så det var, ja, jag trodde ju att alla tätlagen hade smittit förbi så ja, jag var, var väldigt besviken där på slutet och tänkte att nu har jag sabbat det för laget. Men skönt att se att vi ändå kunde växla i ledning även om det var tajt. Det var riktigt tajt, men det var också andra som gjorde, gjorde lite missar där. Vad tycker du det beror på? Nej, men jag tror att det var liksom diffust i grönområdet på slutet så var det en ganska lång sträcka. Och det gällde att hålla i kompassen liksom. och jag tror att ja, man slarvar lite på slutet så glider det snabbt iväg. Liksom. Mm. Nu, nu är det sista sträckan bara kvar där, så, så hur tror du att vad kommer att vara avgörande? Nej, men eh, vi vet ju att Sara är grimt stark och hon har bra självförtroende just nu, så ja, jag tror att hon kommer göra det bra. Ja, jag tror det passar kanske Sara jättebra, men jag önskar det bästa. Ja, tusen tack. <laughs> so, uh, she was explaining that uh, she had the feeling throughout the whole course that it's not going very well and uh, she actually thought that all of the top teams would have passed her and that she kind of messed it up for the team. Uh, she also mentioned that it was quite diffuse and uh, like it was hard to figure out the features in the end and it was very important to keep direction with the compass in order to not get off uh, direction to get too much to the left or to the right and of course uh, asked uh, for the strength of Sara Hoxham she was very confident uh, what else should she be yeah exactly um what else can you can you say about um sarah hugstrom who took her first world cup win this year she is absolutely stellar athlete and we can follow her here on her way from control four to control number five you can see just cutting into this forest and she is so so speedy through the terrain i think she's been but she spent a winter in italy i think training really in the mountains almost excellent <laughs> Uh, it's this beautiful forest, I'm just enjoying it. I needed my like slow myself down to, to avoid bigger mistakes uh, so I could really like focus on all the objects and if I just someone to pass by, it's just beautiful like for me. Uh, you have been training quite a lot here in Finland. We have seen you also on uh, VST Liga running, running quite nice legs. Do you think that has had some effect on your good runs or have you just ha have the same terrain in your own country? Uh, no, no at all. Uh, you know, we had a Yukola camp that uh, Finn Spring was sending. So we had a few days to get familiar to the terrain. We had some masters uh, within the team. So we knew what to expect in here and we just could uh, use our strength here. So what do you think uh, now during the last leg? What, what will be the really uh, most important thing? So Hannah be enjoying my her like on orienteering. Uh, I know the terrain is suits to her. Uh, she's really strong. She she can do this her own job and it will be all we, we need to have. Let's hope for the best and, and stay focused. See how it goes. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> So that was Alexand Alexandra Hornick there from Iktisa, second place team currently, talking about her runner Hannah Wisniewska on the last leg. Mm -hmm. We just saw her through there. Yeah, but she lost a lot of time, one and a half minutes here uh, in the very beginning. Only a few controls, so two minutes and 15 seconds now the gap. So we're looking for the third place team. And it was uh, New Darlings who was in third place at the changeover, very, very closely with OK Linné. And here is Linné. This is uh, Joanna Oberé, the Swedish runner. And we will look to find uh, Calvin Rusty, I think, next, Mia Nittinen. And we're waiting for New Darlin as well, who I think dropping a little bit back through the field. Mm, but all of the teams here lost a lot of time in the beginning, both Iktisa and Linné. Here we have uh, Calvin Rasti. Uh, mm, also lost a minute, a uh, bit more. It's a very good start for Sara Hagström. Can you, from looking at the GPS tracking, th is it is it just good running speed? Is it is it have any of the other teams made mistakes per se? I mean, we had we had some forking here in the very beginning, so I think she had a good option on the second control. But uh, I mean, there were other teams having that option as well, and uh, it seems as if it's the speed actually. 
Yeah, she's looking really strong. This is uh, kind of the hill before the next TV control as we just follow her through and it's mm. really having a solid run here. And on this hill, uh, we had actually uh, four four different forking options. So uh, all of the legs were forked on this hill. We just missed Anna Magretta. She just kind of uh, disappeared out of the picture. Anna Magretta has good Nordberg down into fifth then for New Darlings. Here, we we'll may be listening out, here she is, here's the leader then. Here is Sara Hagström for EFK Göteborg. And running away from the rest of the field. Super, super strong there. Now eh, now the forking's becoming more even as well. Laten soon is there, yeah. Yeah, Mina Kalpi. And uh, SK Poyentetti with uh, Kirshinomi too. Okay, we've got a couple more teams approaching this uh, fourth control. Here uh, is uh, Bjorsen. Now, nearly six minutes of running here. We've got, uh, oh, here's Ben Lahayu. This is Tampurin Perinta. I was going to say she's approaching. We're looking out for Stora Tuna as well. Stora Tuna just punched that control. Mm, and she lost time as well. So uh, 5.55 was the gap at the start. So lost another 40 seconds. Uh, another proof that the start of Sara Akström was very strong here. Kind of confirms the feeling we got when we looked at the GPS that it was mostly the physical mm. skills here. Yeah, she looked fantastic through the terrain. And very kind of obviously very decisive in her movements as well. So we've had Vestavix through that earlier point now, but we're towards control number seven here. And just could trying to find out how many teams we've seen through. Not sure we've I think we might have only just seen the leaders through. So the time ticks off there. Now we now we get up to date for where we are right now. Looking for Ixtisa. Look, uh, take a look at the watch there at the yeah. clock. Three minutes have come. And it grows uh, again. Yeah, it has been two minutes and 15. Uh, but I think very soon we will have Ixtisa here. Yeah, they are number 21. Now oh, we have no, here. Here, And I think uh, there is Calvin Rastich Calvin as Rastich well. Just behind. Where is Iktisa? Oof. Actually did a mistake on the forking just before. Ah, oh, is she here? Yes, here she is. This is Iktisa Hanovisniewska. So actually, Calavan Rasti had the same speed through the four kings here, but very hard to say because, as I mentioned before, there was uh, four different go. options. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. So uh, all of the legs were forked against each other in this, and it's not an easy forking to just uh, figure out which one is the fastest. No, especially because one goes a, a completely 90 degree di different yeah. direction and out of the control. Look at it. So this one yeah. is quite fine still. Control six. It's the next one that. Uh, um, Anna Wisniewska was missing. Control mm. E there. 
just so getting too close to it. far to the left, a bit far mm. down in the slope. Then, of course, if you are too low, you don't see the cliff up there. Yeah, really, really tough. And then suddenly she is uh, with other people. You heard um, Alexandra Hornick saying she was looking forward to seeing Hannah Wisniewska you know, running out there by herself. And now it's obviously uh, surrounded by some other runners as well. So we've got a few more teams approaching now. We're looking out for New Darlings. Oh, SK Poyentetti is here. Kishinomi and Anna Margareta Haskin Nuberg is uh, kind of dropping back, I think, here. We also got uh, the message that number 14, um, bit number 14, to look up the. We have a disqualification here. Just try to figure out which team it is. Control team number 14 is uh, Fal Sherpings. Okay, another one of the top teams. Quite a low number, though. So we've, we've had uh, Minna Kalpi, Anna Margareta Haskin Norberg, two orienteering legends, through at the same time. They'll have had the last couple of decades of racing each other. <laughs> And we can see in the split screen here, in the insert, we are back behind the leader, Sara Hagström, making light work of this terrain. You can see it's a little bit flatter open here, and her progress is pretty good. Well, we also had uh, Stura Tuna here, uh, to Alexandersson, 6.26 behind, Tampren Pyrinto and Bjorsson. Yeah, I wonder if we can stay here to see uh, Stora Tuna as well. Oh, we sorry, we saw her through. I totally missed that. So that means actually Alexanderson climbing a couple of places in that over the forking. He is in the top right-hand corner. Uh, Sala Hagstrom just found that control. That's the tenth control, and as you can see there. Take a look at Iktisa up there in the Ooh. corner, totally off direction. Ooh. It will be a difficult one to get back there because she is now not very close to the control and usually you don't expect to be so far off. So the relocation is much more difficult if you're... Yeah, I mean, these are about 100, 100 meters. And now it looks, of course, very, very promising for Jefko Göteborg because you can see here, this is about... Um, for more more than four minutes, I would guess. But also look back, if you look back into second place, that's now Calvin Rasti up into second from fifth at the changeover. So that's a really, really good uh, kind of climbing position here for me in Ittenen. And she's managed to get, well, uh, well I was going to say she was going to get a, a slight gap on uh, Joanna Oberi from Ukeline, but not quite, I think, there. Mm, uh, Iktisa got the control now, uh, but lost a lot of time, uh, at least, now together with Boyantetti and uh, Laden Sundistayat. What's the next team we might see through this point? Uh, we're waiting for a few teams. Pan Orhus, maybe in about 30 seconds. Then we're also waiting for Ente Anui. Uh, to see if we have a yet. But uh, Ente Anui and Helsingin Sunistayat will take um, about another 40 seconds. So I think Pan Orhus very soon to this TV control. Yeah, and Trina Benjaminson for them on the last leg. Little look again at the GPS tracking. You can see the gap then uh, that the leaders that uh, Sara Hagstrom has been able to make. There's number 10, Helsing and Sinister Arts. 
That is Everly Karsaku, the Estonian, having a good one there. Ente Nui just punched. Anna Drikorn, a Norwegian runner. Who again, yeah, has made the Norwegian team for the World Championships. And actually now uh, Sara Hoekström is heading into this area where we had a lot of mistakes on the third leg. So hopefully we'll get to see the GPS from there in order to explain a bit closer what happened. There's a little group there of uh, Iktisa, Laden Sinithiat, Nidalen. Joe, just got to be careful that they're making the right direction here because they're really going quite far off the red line there. See here that uh, New Dalen not really having a good direction uh, towards Control 10. Kind of a risk that they take Tisa and the other teams with them. Now it seems that she gets back on track. Here we have uh, Linnea up there punching Johanna Berry. No, and I think uh, Calvin Rassi was just ahead there. Mm -hmm can see the best yeah the upper right corner and of course uh, you know oh, it's got to work really hard to kind of keep on the back of Nia Nittinen just kind of to get that little help keep that motivation up and just have something ahead that you can look towards but yeah there's quite a few um kind of fallen just like small fallen trees out in the terrain today and this is the the later TV control we can see in the picture now, the top right hand mm -hmm. side. And it's, uh, yeah, as I said, between control 11 and this TV control, many of the runners struggle, but not Sara Hagstrom. <laughs> not at all. She makes it look so, so easy. Her form is so strong right now. And uh, she will certainly be listed on my on my favorites list when we look towards the world championships coming up very soon in switzerland she's proved her form incredibly well so far this season here's lena strand uh, for gothenburg mayona in 22nd gorilla group here this looks like svetlana miranova from halden ski club we've also got carolyn olsen for yela so uh a, couple, a few runners who know each other quite well, or I'd go very well with in terms of Lena Strand and Carolyn Olsen. They're good friends. This is second and third place teams then here on the running camera. And this is actually the bit where we had the mistakes on the third leg. And you can see that uh, it's, it's much more dense. It's totally different compared to what we've seen before. It's actually not the most extreme part right here. Uh, but yeah, visibility from one second to the other got very much lower. And I think that's the reason why we had so many mistakes on the third leg. Here you see yeah, the different controls. And the control most of them struggle with is the G one. Uh, when they stayed, the problem was that they stayed too close low. to the, yeah, too low. So they stayed on the stream, uh, going a bit to the left. And then they missed the opportunity to climb up those few meters, especially anti -NV. So they were actually in this, depression or in this valley between yeah just left to the the letter g and uh, missing there and other teams cl missed close to control h just in the circle or it's just the visibility lower and then it, 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 uh, combined with the fact that that you see the controls very late mm. you really mm. have to take every step towards the control to see it but let's see how they approach it. I think, I mean, it's a good choice to climb up there, in my opinion, because it's so much easier to have <laughs> an overview from the top of the hill 
first of all, the runnability is better. Second of all, visibility is good up there. So it's very much easier to see the features. And there's more features as well. Yeah, of course. But if you see to, towards control 11, almost everyone is going to the left. You would have mm. to have the chance to go to the right. But then everything you learn from the first part of the course is that the runnability in the green bits is very good and visibility as well. It's mm. the first time where it is lower. And then you have the same chance to control at least the G1. Uh, but almost no one is keeping to the left because now you know that the visibility is lower. Mm. So you're eager to go on top and use this open things and here I mean it's quite a dark green on the mm. map but it's uh, leaf trees and uh, you can actually see the the small hill quite early so it's much easier there compared to around control 11 as well so it's it's kind of strange when you get there it's not what you expect but it, it's totally correct uh, mm. yeah, map yeah, yeah. because it's uh, the mapping is due to runnability and not visibility mm. so it's mm. Uh, but it's me, it's just a bit, uh, it's not what you expect when you have in mind what you learned on the first 11 controls. Yeah, and what, what makes the orienteering difficult, uh, especially at this kind of high level, is when you get thrown uh, from one kind of type of terrain to another type of terrain. And that doesn't mean going from an open I mean, area to a, to a forested area or a flatter area to a steeper area. It can be really subtle changes like these that just yeah, kind of throw you off. You have to be very off. flexible and yeah. adapt to the different kind of the terrain. I mean, the mapping is very black or white uh, in, in that way that you you're kind of stuck to the rules of course you have to keep mm. this uh, green bits regarding the runnability and then and i do so th and they've done a really good job at sticking yeah, yeah. to the rules i think you could every time you get to think you go yeah this is slower runnability here we go though here still is that uh, calvin rasti and mia nittenen who still just 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 ahead of joanna obery and okay Linné. but both of them lost more than a minute uh, between the second TV control and this third TV control. Mm. Uh, might be a bit due to the four king at control 12, because I think that it's quite a good option to have the eye control there. You can yeah. stay on the hill. You get, uh, you don't have, if you have the G, it's, it's quite much up and down if you climb up onto the, on the hill. H is, as we have seen from the runners before, quite mm. difficult when it comes to find within the circle and the uh, eye seems to be the most con convenient one to have. Yeah, so Nidal and uh, Poyenteti, Itisa, Storotuna, all with the eye control and all making their way very, very shortly towards this uh, TV control. Control number 13 for them after the forking and actually we're kind of going to be looking into different directions, I think, to see who's going to actually come out of this terrain first, because it could be quite close here. And New Darlings and Anna Margrethe Haskin Norberg is the first one through with SK Point 30 and Kirsty Nermi then into the next spot. Minakalpi there makes it next. And that is Igtisa Hanovisniewska dropping a few more places here. Mm, and I mean, she went out just uh, around 40 seconds behind. Then it grew, was growing to 2.15, 3.54, and now 6.22. It's really not the best race of her. So this is uh, Saba Hagström pulling some good speed here on the track and she is on her way to the control after this one. So this is mm. control 13. She's on her way to the next one. She picked uh, quite a good route choice to control 14. Uh, didn't take any risks running through a green area. Stora Tuna just through with Tova Alexanderson. But she lost time as well. Uh, another 40 seconds. She's still climbing uh, position-wise, or at least got rid of uh, Bjorsen and Tampere and Pyrinta. Uh, and here it's very open. 
Uh, visibility is good, uh, both this control and the next one. And then we are heading back into this area where we had uh, close to the finish, actually, where we had many of the runners struggling on the third leg. But she has so much, I mean, she's not aware of that, but she actually has so much time. She, If she just uh, slows down a little bit, um, if you don't feel any pressure and if you're not getting nervous, uh, the map is really good enough to read the way through to the control. So I think the problem occurs when you're stressed and you have many other teams around you. Uh, that may, might lead to, to mistakes. Kind of what Sana Fast was, was talking about. Exactly. She felt that she had struggled so much before that she she felt that the others are close even if they weren't. So it's stressful situation and then it's harder to keep everything together you can see it's uh, i think that's a quite a good option because runnability there at any time is good there's no risk to lose direction uh, when you follow the cliffs there in the middle of the on the leg and from the street uh, you can almost see the feature where the control is yeah. the visible is very good yeah you could just see that picture on the top of the hill how far you could see hundreds of meters really through that terrain and you can see all those athletes behind who as they leave this control really going kind of different routes at least on that kind of the first part of the leg you've got different kind of densities of forest different amounts of climb you've got some tracks i mean some actually quite very big forest roads as you've been seeing to kind of contend with but we can go skip ahead then to the next tv control we haven't seen that one before no it's we've not control 15 and from here then we'll head back, as I mentioned before, just uh, very close to the finish. Take a small loop again on the flat area uh, up there. And uh, but it's, we're talking about five controls and time-wise, maybe 10 minutes. I mean, 10 minutes of running and the gap of, yeah four and have almost five minutes i don't really know if i see any scenario of them not winning yeah well, uh, well uh, I, mysterious, kind of mysterious things and unexpected things I'm playing happen with in the relays. commentator's curse now. you really are you really are panel oh, who's there andrew benny minson yeah oh. of course i mean this this control 16 where she's heading now this See, like if we have in mind what we have seen on the third leg this might be quite a tricky one uh, visibility low not as many features as in other places but the difference here if you come from this direction now you, you get the kind of cut an area before that helps you and takes you to like just 200 meters before the control that should be doable yeah it really really should it's as you said it's close to the arena it's there's not too far you can grow you know there's going to have to be some something completely off the book to to put a barrier in her place let's go back then to this long leg because this is quite an interesting one that we've seen all the runners mm. split up on and uh, as i mentioned before if you look at the route where new dal and Poyantet is it's it's kind of mm. As you mentioned, as you said before, it looks greener on the competition map than on this one, yeah. where yeah. Lini and Kalavandrasti uh, are. So the one uh, option more to the north, uh, very convenient, because there it's actually white, and you got those cliffs there that help you with direction. No, no risk to get stuck there. And then from this kind of parking space or turning point on the street i am really not overdoing it but you almost see the feature you see the hill where the control is at so it's it's 14 is a really easy control i mean it's pretty much it's like right at the top of the hill or it's just over the other side of the hill so as long as you're kind of keeping going up you can you can see where the high point is of that hill and just head there i mean if only it was that easy for all of us with the orienteering but <laughs> you get the picture
Okay, Lower looking for the next teams up to control number 14. They've only just reached kind of the bottom of that hill, so I think a good couple of minutes before we see them. Yeah, maybe or minutes, two minutes. Yeah, minute or two. More interesting to exactly here. Yes. It follows Otto Hockström. As you can see, the visibility here, very low. Now we understand why they struggled with the controls there. It's actually like this so all the way to the control. Just see the end of the tail in the upper right corner <laughs> disappearing. This feels like quite a good route choice from Nidal in there and uh, the other runner who's made that choice. I think that's uh, Poyentetti maybe or uh, Lavin Sinisiat. They seem to have maybe climbing, closing a little bit more of the gap. Mm, and uh, you can keep in mind that the uh, Sana Hockstrom had the same route there, so she might not have lost the time on this route either. She can also tell you that she is punishing control 16 without any problems at all. Yeah, I think that was the danger control, wasn't it? Where we saw ah. all of those teams make there's, mistakes. There's one other uh, we haven't seen before in the relay, control 19. but. As I mentioned before, if you have time and you don't feel the pressure from the runners behind. And she's, bah. I mean, she, um, she's so experienced at being in this kind of position. She knows the kind of right feeling that she needs to have, that she's not going too fast, she's not going too slow. But I mean, we have to keep in mind the picture she has in her head is oh, yeah. 37 seconds lead from the changeover. She has no clue about this six minutes and more. I guess that's what's quite fun when there's no arena passage. You know, they have no chance of having any sort of feedback about what sort of a gap she has. Well, the gap, yeah. it was 37, it's now five minutes. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, Linnea and Callum Andrassi probably lost a bit of time on the route choice. Uh, the gap was 4.41. Compared to Kalavandarasti, they should actually be there just uh, every second. Yeah, here they go. Yeah. It's uh, Kalavandarasti first and then Linnea. Yeah, so the same order these ah, two we've seen. And look yeah. at that. There is actually a small mistake of EF Yatepori to control 16. A bit far up the hill, and now you can see what I was talking about before, that uh, they had to control quite close, uh, yeah, between 16 and 17, and they were very close to the arena, so you should have been able to see the arena there. So, yeah, she's made that control uh, where we saw the mistake, so the GPS slightly behind, kind of as we're used to seeing. Here's it was not a big mistake. Nidalen. Have they caught up? Has uh, Haskell Nordberg caught up slightly? Uh, so she's 30 seconds uh, behind second. second and third. Oh, okay. Well, compared to Yevka Yatebori. No, but, but compared uh, to second and third. Yeah, it was 120. Okay, so yeah. So yeah. Yeah, caught up half 50 seconds. The, yeah, half of yeah. the gap. That's pretty good. I think that was a good route choice for that control. And actually dropping a couple of the other runners as well. Got Skate Boy and Teti, Ladon Sinisiat, Tisa, of course, Storatuna, and Alexanderson trying to catch up places for her club. And again, it's another example of you can see the feature is like the other side of the camera, mm. which is really it's really been a theme of how how kind of the core setters have really laid out these controls which is exactly how it should be to make a course like this as as difficult as it needs to be for this kind of terrain one, one thing you see now mm. uh, in the picture where sarah hoxner is that uh, the terrain up there is very flat but it's also open uh, so important thing to keep uh, direction but it shouldn't be too difficult because you can see far and you can s spot those bare, bare rock, rock. Uh, passages. So actually here it's so beautiful to run. Yeah, this is what uh, 
orienteers dream of gorgeous runnable terrain like this tricky points as well as she's got to drop off the side of the hill here's Dora Tuna just seen it's over Alexanderson go through she's climbed up I think one more place since we last saw no two more places since we last saw her from eighth up now into sixth place but is she still losing losing time yeah, I mean it's 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 the thing we were talking about it she will be able to pick positions but maybe not time yeah And uh, as we are talking, we have uh, Hockstrom at control 18. No problems there either. This is Igtisa. This yeah. is Hanna Wisniewska. The Polish runner. She looks tired. Yeah, she... Yeah. <laughs> she looks stressed, I think, as well. Okay, but back live with them with this GPS tracking. And this control 19 uh, again a bit more green you than it looks yeah, like. Yeah, I was going to say you need to. This is kind of a let's call it a simplified version of the map. Let's call it. Don't show too much of the map yet. Yeah, <laughs> yes. We've still got one of the relay to come today, tonight. Uh, but it's a tricky one. Um, if you have five or six minutes to work with. Yeah, but she doesn't know, as you keep reminding me. Yeah, yeah, but she still. She has no idea. She doesn't know that she has that amount of time, but she still has it. Yeah. So we wait in the woods then for the next runners to come through. There's 6.4 kilometer point. I think this, uh, they've just punched the previous control. I mean, Those uh, are standings. Uh, control 19, as I said, should be doable for Jefko and uh, Sara Hockström, but it will be very interesting when we get into the fight for the second position, because in the head-to-head, -head, mm -hmm. in this green area, this is a tricky one. Yeah, because you're going to be watching where the other person's going. You're not maybe going to keep 100% eye on your own orienteering, especially when it comes down to this crunch point at the end, because I don't think... Either, either of them will really want it to come down to a sprint finish on the line. They're going to want it to have done it through the orienteering, right? And uh, Hagström punched at the third last control. And now uh, it's almost all about this fight for the second and third position here. You see them leaving in different directions, trying to do their own thing. And th uh, this is uh, for the last few TV controls. We've seen them in the other order. And we also get an indication about the mistake of Hogstern. It was about mm. 40 seconds here because they are, yeah, it's less than five minutes now again. Next one to get here should be Nydalen, but I think it will take another minute. Yeah, maybe 45 seconds. But on the way to the 20th control, on the way to the second last control, Sara Axtern now is on the top of the hill. And my feeling after pre-running when you get up there it's so open it's not a difficult control but you feel like you're flying because it's bare rock <laughs> it's open terrain you can see the cliffs you know nothing can happen from here uh, and it's just incredible to run up there ah, not so very happy with the Oof. direction of Linné uh, much better the direction of Kalle van der Rasti. I think she got the uh, situation under control now, but uh, this was going to be interesting. But let's focus on Sara Hagström and on the winner of this relay. Yeah, she's dropping now down into the 20th control. You can see the big line of kind of crags and boulders towards her left. It's not proving to be tricky at all uh, for the Swedish runner. Uh, in fact, she's kind of just in that kind of denser part of the orienting again. The control just hidden slightly behind the corner. She looks behind her, maybe to see the running camera, maybe to see are there any other orienteers hot on her heels. 
She's been around this course. She had a 37 second gap when she was handed uh, into the lead on the last leg. And she has no idea what the gap will be now. But I tell you what, it is a huge one. She just has to drop down here. She punches the air already. She knows it's a big, big gap and her teammates are here. They are here to give her a huge hug. They have done it. This team have a massive gap on the rest of the field. I think they're just gonna telling her exactly how big it is because this team from IFK Gothenburg, IFK Yotabelli, are gonna take both major relay titles here in 2023. And I mean, if you look at the competition today, Ingrid Lundanes on the first leg, only 45 seconds behind. That's exactly the way you want to have your uh, first leg runner. Then you have the position where you can place one of the best runners in the world on the second leg, on the shortest leg, as, or as you call it, put the weakest runner on the second <laughs> leg. The and of course, she is able to, to kind of, if, if it's not opening a gap, but then at least getting them further apart from each other. Uh, and then Sana Fast, even if it was a lot of up and down, she still had this minute or almost minute in the finish. At least she was out of sight from the runners behind. And Sara Axtrem, I mean, we don't have to talk about this. There was, was there any, yeah, there was one mistake here in the very end, 40 seconds. But otherwise, it was a perfect race. And I mean, look at the gap, it's just incredible. The gap is absolutely incredible. And that team then, Ingrid Lundinez, Simona Abasol, Sana Fast, and Sada Hogstrom have done an incredible job. Yeah, definitely. And uh, now I think we can switch very soon to the fight for the second and third position because we have now Linné and Kalle van der Asti. And this Here's, watch, this, watch these two teams mm, splitting up here. Wasn't really beca in, because the runability is so good and the visibility is so good there. I think there is no bigger damage. And this control now, it's going to be interesting how they handle it. No problem at all. Very well done. Still advantage, Kalle van der Rasti. Now it's, in my opinion, a very physical end of this course. But you can see there behind. Who is chasing behind? <laughs> In fourth position, Stura Tuna. Mm. Tove Alexanderson, uh, yeah, picked many positions here. <laughs> yeah, uh, now, uh, what, what, where was she when they, she handed over? Let me just I have a little 11. look back. Uh, 11, it was. Yeah, and now into fourth. I mean, climbing, 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 but running out of, uh, running out of course, I think, here to get into the top three. But I think she will be much less stressed than the runners ahead. A very well-deserved team performance. So you've got you've got these two teams now vying for second and third, really, really close. Are you going to want to kind of sit? Do you, where do you want to sit? Do you want to be leading it? Do you want to be sitting back, kind of waiting to pounce, maybe hoping the other one does a mistake? Here they are again. They're really close together. Well, and as it's been through most of the course, Mia Nittenen kind of leading the way. But I wonder if Joanna Oberry is just 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 sticking with her, and then is going to back herself on the on the run in. I don't know. I mean, it depends. I mean, but the the, the thing is, what you really don't want is to let a small gap open. So no matter what happens, stay together. If you're not uh, like, if you're the one behind, don't let the gap open. Or if you feel that you're the weaker runner, try to risk something. Try to decide it on beforehand. You, now we can see that they're actually splitting up a little bit. Uh, only a few meters. Now you, you see the very distinct big uh, stone there, boulder. Um, they, in my opinion, they're choosing a bit unnecessarily low route here and getting stuck in these green bits. Oh, yeah, very literally stuck. Yeah. Uh, you could have kept a bit more to the left and then you would have the bare rocks but it shows also that if one runner is getting in any direction the other one is following so they kind of want to decide it on the last meters yeah they are now there's quite an easy route into this control you can do what but Sal Hagstrom did get the feeling that yeah. Urbari is a bit stronger legs. here 
at least in the forest, will be interesting to see how it develops when they get out into the open area. And there's a Ooh. chance now. You see the difference in punching yeah. uh, between the Swedish team and <laughs> the Finnish team. <laughs> And now this is it, it's all on this descent in towards the finish. And there's another punch coming, which can be decisive. But I think that the gap is too big, so it looks very good for Linnea here. Yeah, Linnea and Joanna Oberi has been in third for so much of this leg. She's just sat behind the fin, but has now got a race towards the finishing line. She looks over her shoulder once. And this is the race for the silver medal position. Joanna Oberi of LK Linnea is on towards the finish. She's being chased by Mia Nittinen for Kalinan Rasti. But it's going to be the Swedish team who is going to get it ahead of the Finns here. The gap is about five minutes, just under five minutes behind the leading team. But Kalinan Rasti will be very, will be very, very happy. You can see there to take the third. She'll be maybe slightly annoyed. She's just missed out on that second place. So close between those two teams. And I think one of the biggest mistakes here in this last part or uh, throughout the races for Linnea is actually the graphics that mm. give us the wrong name and yeah. we use it because it's, uh, of course, now Johanna Riedefeld and not Öberg. And, uh, yeah, talking about uh, kind of get a better position and picking places here, uh, Stura Tuna from 11 into fourth position. And also time-wise, it was okay, but uh, no big difference between the two of them, uh, as we expected from the beginning. No, not at all. But Tova Alexanderson anchors Stora Tuna home into fourth place. A star runner then on the final leg for Stora Tuna, the 17-time world champion, and into fourth i think definitely compared to how you see saw the saw the you know first few there is c control 19. I'm, I'm kind of happy that i didn't see the whole time that this is a difficult one and we never see a mistake <laughs> but uh you see a big mistake by latin soon is now and big tisa uh, and you see that new Dalen now gets the chance for maybe a fifth position to get this in Helsinki and soon is And I wonder exactly which bit they may be looking at the a longer leg there. You can see Cecile Calandri just watching over their very essential debrief, getting their initial thoughts. I think we'll get an interview with uh, the whole winning team in just a few moments' time. As we wait for some more of the teams in, we're looking for Nudalen next and Margaretha Haskin Norberg on the last leg for that team. I wonder if we can see her dropping down uh, through the terrain very soon. Yeah, we can see her in the picture now. Yeah, you're right, just making her way towards the gravel. And this will be a really strong fifth place for the Darlings, equaling their performance last year. So, Anna Margrethe Halskin just crossing the line, taking that punch into that fifth position. Who is making their way down the hill next? Who are we looking out for? We are looking for Tamper and Pyrinto. Uh, even though she is making her life a bit unnecessarily uh, complicated by staying uh, up on the cliffs where you could follow just uh, towards the control, but I think uh, the gap compared to Latan Sunis died and Iktisa is about a minute, so that should be good enough in order to get this sixth position for Tamper. Det 
kul så det tror jag säger sig det Har ni varit mycket att träna i såna här terrängar? Nej, vi har inte varit här så mycket men vi var här på tisdag. Nej, vi kom på torsdags men ja. Och fick två pass. Mm. Men det verkade vara tillräckligt. Och sen Simona, det gick väldigt fint för dig också. Då. Ni har haft stabila lopp hela tiden. Är det något som ni ägnade åt att, att alla skulle vara bara så bra som möjligt? Ja, vi hade ju planlagt att liksom ta tid och bara köra vår ting. Men ja, det gick väldigt bra för mig. Jag tog min tid och um, jag följde mig väldigt bra fysisk. Det var liksom första gången jag följde mig så bra fysisk i år. Så det var väldigt gött att löpa. Ja, hur mycket betyder det här att vinna Vänla Kavlen? Det betyder mycket. Eh, väldigt mycket för mig. Jag var inte här i fjol. Så ja, det är första gången för mig att vinna t- eh, Jukola med med IFK så det är väldigt kul. Det betyder mycket. Härligt. Och vi fortsätter fram till tredje sträckan och sanna fast. Uh, ni är alla med i VM snart. Så var det här bara en bra uh, preparation eller, eller hur har ni ännu, ännu hunger kvar? Nej men absolut. Vänner är en av årets höjdpunkter så ja, vi har verkligen sett fram emot den här veckan. Och, uh, du hade ett par lilla uh, missar där i skogen, men visste du redan att, att det skulle räcka, att ni har Sara på sista sträckan? Jo, men absolut. Det är alltid tryggt att skicka ut Sara på sista sträckan. Så även om det var nervöst i skogen så uh, uh, det var det fint att höra att vi hade en liten lucka ut. Ja, men när man tittar på s- sista sträckan också så har man gjort ganska många bummar, så, så det är inte så farligt nu. Och Sara Hagström sen sista sträckan. Du visste att det var ganska stora konkurrenter där bakom dig. Hur kunde du hålla dig lugn och stabil? Vi har haft bra teamsnack innan där vi har haft som taktik att bara fokusera på oss själva och våga ta kartstopp om man är osäker. Så att jag höll i det men ändå så var det svårt att inte titta bakåt. Det är svårt att veta att man är jagad men jag tyckte att jag klarade av det väldigt bra. Och alla vet att du är i riktigt bra form i år och väntar ivrigt att se vad det som kommer att hända i VM. Hur fortsätter din säsong nu med träningar här framåt? Ja, men nu ska jag springa någon Jukola-sträcka tror jag i Monbitti. Så det ska bli jättekul. Jag, jag älskar Jukola. Det är väldigt eh, häftigt med så stor tävling och så många som är med. Eh, så det, det blir första anhalt. Men sen så blir det väl lite mer träning och så ner till Schweiz och förbereda för VM. Gratulerar ännu en gång och tack så mycket. So, uh, There's a lot for you to translate there. Yeah, I have <laughs> my book full of uh, things to tell to you. Um, so London has said that they didn't train so much in the terrain here, that they just arrived on Thursday, but uh, well, they had the training and uh, obviously it, it worked out well. Uh, then uh, Simona said that she took her time and um, that uh, she felt good physically and that it means a lot to her to win it the first time together with her new club mates from IFK Göteborg. Sanna Fast, uh, yeah, she was asked if uh, she was confident when, even though she did a few mistakes, because she knew that Sara would come uh, later on and of course she said it's always good to know that you have one of the strongest, if not the strongest runner uh, coming after you. And uh, Sara said that she had a good, they had a good talk about tactics before the focus was to, to yeah, to focus on themselves and take breaks when, the, when needed. We've got a few other teams coming in towards the finish right now. I think quite a few teams just coming towards the finish. Ente Nui, uh, Sinta Yoveskula, Helsinki and Sinithiat going into 11th, 12th and 13th place as well. Uh, Igtisa dropping down ultimately into 9th place. We can see a lot of people uh, in there as well. And... And watching with me, I've got Sara Hagström as well. Um, we'll have a little more of a chat as we see some more of the teams through as well. We were talking a lot in commentary about you having a 37 second lead when you went out, which is not, yeah. the, it's a good lead, it's not the biggest, but it's good. And how 
Did you feel the teams behind you? Were you worried or were you confident that you were making gaps? Because of course you wouldn't have seen anybody in the terrain. No, no, I was really, really nervous. Uh, so uh, I watched uh, my back a lot uh, and also I, I thought maybe the, the cameraman was uh, someone uh, catching me because I did some small, small uh, hesitations, but uh, I knew I didn't uh, do a big uh, mistake. So yeah, I was quite sure it wouldn't be someone, but still you're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we, um, you're very experienced at running kind of in this position on a relay. Um, is it easy to go to judge your efforts uh, here? Yeah, uh, it's really hard. And also in the heat, you you don't know how the body reacts and it feels like shit all the time. <laughs> but we had talked about it uh, before to not uh, like uh, evaluate uh, the body's feeling uh, in the forest. Just focus on orienteering and take the stops and uh, yeah, do our own race. Yeah, let the navigation um, decide how quickly or slowly you're going to run. Yeah. And how much, you know, how many days have you been here for kind of preparing already for, for this race? Like when did you arrive in Finland? Of course, your biggest aim this year Year will be the world championships running yeah. in the mountains and everything but <laughs> what has it been like making that uh, jump from the mountains to here yeah it's been uh, I think it's always give, gives me a lot of energy to come here and uh, compete with the EFCO we have a good uh, atmosphere and it's like almost like vacation but still <laughs> of course like you have to uh, perform uh, but I came with the boat uh, yesterday morning, so uh, I had time for two uh, sessions uh, yesterday and to calibrate into the uh, orienteering. And uh, yeah, now uh, I will go back home uh, for uh, work for a week and then uh, down to Switzerland. <laughs> um, Jonas and I both pre-ran the courses. We said we really liked the map and all the detail on the map. What did you think? Yeah, I really like it, but still I had some troubles with the... Uh, um, elevation or like the contours. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a bit floating sort of. Uh, maybe I am calibrated for the <laughs> alpine terrain. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had some troubles with that. But uh, yeah, of course, uh, you have so much features to navigate on. So I like that a lot. I run with this uh, wrist compass. So for me, it's good with a lot of details. Yeah, a lot, a lot of kind of things you can read and, and just be careful. Um, yeah. And then a quickly a word about your ne your next big competition of course it's the world championships yeah. um how confident are you feeling based on your results at the world cup so far the results in the test races as well you must be you have a lot of confidence in what you can do there yeah of course uh, the results is uh like speaking for itself, uh, I'm in really good shape now, but still you have some hesitations and I ran some intervals previous uh, in the week and it felt like, oh no, I'm not so good anymore. My shape is gone. But then then you come and uh, compete and then you see uh, the shape is not so bad after all. So yeah, I, I think I should just uh, focus on myself towards uh, walk and uh, yeah, see how it goes. I hope to, uh, that I can uh, challenge the best ones in the world. Well, yes, and thank you. And thanks for stopping by to have a chat. Congrats Congratulations on today. The whole performance for, you, for your whole club, the, the, the way you put the team together was really fantastic. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was a really nice competition. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. OK, let's head back then to the race.
So Jana Riederfeldt has uh, joined me now uh, in, in our commentary box, uh, second place team. And you must have been getting, I don't know, I would have been so nervous at the end. You running alongside me and Ittenen, how did you keep your cool there? Uh, I don't know. I was really, really nervous. And when I crossed the finish line, I almost like started crying because I felt that for like relief. Uh, I felt all the pressure letting go. And um, you saw a lot of her through the course. We could see you together kind of changing positions. What was it like to... You know, you know you're running for a top three and you've got someone right next to you as well. Yeah, 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 that was really, really nervous. I didn't know that it was for top three. Uh, I mean, it was quite forked, I think, in the beginning and I, was, I felt quite alone in the beginning. So I thought that maybe maybe someone has passed me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when did you try and get ahead of her? What, what was the point where you were trying to get ahead? Well, I was like running behind her and, and thinking, should I should I go ahead now? Should I try to, to um, run past her? But uh, yeah, I, I felt that I was pretty strong in the end. Um, so I thought, OK, maybe at the last control or second last control. Yeah, and, and you could, we could see you just kind of taking the meters out of it. You evidently felt pretty strong then at the end. Yeah, take that. yeah I felt that I was that I was strong and I heard that she she's she sounded quite tired at least. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can say that she was, but I, I guess. And all the emotions there of your, your club being right next to you, the, your team seeing you into the finish, how exciting was that? Yeah, that was really, really fun. Uh, I haven't experienced anything like this before. Yeah, and as, as a team, what, what can you tell me about, uh, about the women you were running with uh, and putting the, together that team performance? You know, improving your result from, from last year as well must feel amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Uh, the team is, is quite young now. Uh, so there are three New Norwegian young girls in the team and then me, which is, <laughs> I'm only 26, but I feel very old compared to them. Um, but it's, it's really fun that they're running for the club. They give it a, a lot of energy for, uh, for the women. So if you're, you're, a, you're a developing team, you, you know, what can you do in future years? There's so much, so much more potential left in this club. And as you say, you're only 26. That is not old at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I haven't thought so much about it. Um, I mean, we've had a very strong team on the men's side for a long time now, uh, and they're really experienced. But I feel like, like uh, us women are not so experienced in Linnea, but we're this today we're running really, uh, really stable uh, races anyway. Yeah, keeping that stability. Well, congratulations then on the second place. Thank Thanks you. for chatting to us. We will let you go and cool down and uh, everything as well. And then we will get, I think, back towards the race. So 20 minutes then after the finish of this Vendela Relay, we can look under now down some more of the results. I guess we've got 26 teams in. We've seen some quick runs from the likes of uh, Caroline Olsen on the last leg for Yerla, for Josephine Schoenland on the last leg for Tizarin as well. Mm, and uh, actually, if we're talking about the fastest runner uh, of the leg, it was as we could like predict quite easily. Uh, a fight between Sara Hagström and Tuve Alexanderson. It was decided by nine seconds to uh, Tuve Alexanderson's favor. But there we have to keep in mind there was some celebrations going on for the FK Yetteboy. <laughs> so uh, yes. <laughs> I think it was a very equal race there. I think it was a very equal race, and uh, maybe just that. Oh, we didn't see all of Alexanderson's run, but um, we did see kind of a, a small mistake at Control 17 for Sara Hagström. Mm. And uh, mm. otherwise, uh, third fastest time 
about a bit more than a minute slower than, uh, yeah, maybe one and a half minutes slower than Sara Ackström and Tove Alexandersson. Uh, Inka Nurminen for Jensen Retki Veiko taking them for from 31st to 23rd position. Got a few more kind of top teams in. Maybe it was not the OK quarters day uh, at all. Uh, Lisa Risby uh, on anchor leg for them. We've got a few other teams. OK, Linne too, with uh, German runner Susan Lush on the last leg for them. And I guess, why don't we kind of, we're coming towards the end of the stream kind of reflect on this relay as a whole i guess you know again it, it's just been some kind of consistent team performance ultimately that won it with a few big stars kind of put on the right right legs uh for um uh, EFK Yotabari. but in terms of the kind of the orienteering where we saw people do well where we saw mistakes um any comments you want to say about that well it's it wasn't a very i mean after i've been out in the forest I really thought that there are two places on this women's course where you can do mistakes and it was exactly where they did the mistakes and of course as many other times it's where it gets green and uh, I really hope that uh, I haven't been running one of the men's courses but uh, I hope that it will be about the same that there is different kind of terrains that you have to adapt because it's then where it gets difficult and you add the night running on it and it's a totally new di dimension into this competition. So I'm really looking forward. Um, it's, I mean, it was, sometimes it's almost a bit a pity that the map is so good. <laughs> because <laughs> one thing that I thought is like, you often in relays you get into situations where you start to do parallel mistakes. Mm. And then what you do, when you, when you know, I mean, when you notice it, if you don't notice, then yeah, then bad luck. If mm. you notice that you, there is a risk that you end up with a parallel mistake, then you start to read both options mm. and you try to figure out for both options what your plan is. So, and depending on what's coming, you react from that position. But here, actually, the map is so good that it's very easy to, if you have the two options, to figure out which one's the right one. Uh, especially, uh, I mean, in that part where it's not green. Mm, mm. So I think that's why there were so few uh, that we haven't seen more mistakes um, in the beginning of the courses at least. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons. The terrain, I mean, it's a mix of both. The terrain, the features in the terrain are clear and they're very good readable on the yeah, map. Yeah, 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 you can spot things the boulders are huge you're definitely not going to go miss it. you know it's very obvious what is a mapped boulder and what is just kind of a rock on the ground that's not going to be mapped uh the change in vegetation is quite i thought was fairly clear so yeah i think well but then we have seen some mistakes we see people it's very very warm here we see people kind of getting stressed we see people kind of running maybe a little kind of quicker than their than they should because it's a relay and they're kind of they can't quite keep track of the navigation even if the map is really clear you've got those dense sections so you still you know there's definitely still been mistakes but yeah maybe not as many as you could otherwise get on on a relay like this one like for example we see Vestavix uh, just coming into the finish, just coming to the finish here in 37th. They were up towards uh, the leading few teams uh, earlier on in the relay certainly. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, of course, and uh, I mean, when we are talking about it, e that it's easy or not, it's it's <laughs> always a. It's all relative. Yeah, because it's still a relay, and depending on how nervous the situation is, how much pressure you feel from other teams, are you alone? Is or you're in a group five? Do you start to feel that there is forking, or do the others have the same forking? It v depends very much on that. Uh, if you personally feel that it's difficult or not, or that you get into troubles or not. But I think generally we can say uh, in this part here, when it's white, then we don't see many mistakes. 
Well, we've got a whole nother relay coming up, starting from uh, 11 p.m. local time. We will have the seven legs of Yukala heading out into the night, into this forest to take on all of the challenges that it's going to offer. It's going to be another absolutely spectacular one. Luckily, it'll have cooled down a little bit by then, uh, but still should be uh, good conditions for racing in the night to see who's going to be crowned champions of Yukala. 2023. We'll keep the pictures running for a little bit, but we will be back then in a good few hours' time to bring you the Yukala Relay 2023. Hope you enjoyed, Venla. We'll be back very soon. Bye bye. Broadcast from Yukula 2023 is brought to you by Tikator and Lumonite.